Hello everyone, Connor here. Just as a small disclaimer, some things we may talk about on the pod shouldn't be attempted or recreated. Remember to keep everything legal, keep it between the ages, and don't tear up the ground while you're on the pole. Hello folks, what's crack? You're listening to the Agri Automotive Podcast, but I'm not up differences. <laughs> Sorry. Of- we're it's chatting it's we're about three times for us to start this. Like, we're, go on. We're, we're, if Michael shut up, <laughs> we start to talk all things cars to cows. I'm Connor and. I am Michael. What's the crack, folks? And we are in episode 31. Yeah, we are and they die. So, what's the crack? What's new with you? Um, how long did I get my notes out? Right. No, I just have them ready, you know. Um, Alright, so I don't need them for a while. What's new with me? Uh, we've recorded what? I think it was three weeks ago we last recorded it. I'm not joking. Because we recorded it with Andrew and Owen quite early. Aye. Like, immediately after the last one was released. Aye. And it's Sunday now. Aye, it's been three weeks, give or take. That's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. Time flies yeah. whenever you're having... Well, that was a lot of fun, that last podcast, to it be was. fair. Like, that was really good. That opened up a lot of stuff for us, that last podcast. It did. What an undergob was that? Right, moving on. We the birdie sh- back. The shed's definitely cursed. Have we got a bird here, right enough? Probably. Oh, God. Had a bird shite there. Yeah, our recording conditions wouldn't exactly be uh, state of the art now, shall we say. Um, they never have been. This is true as well. Well, this is a severe upgrade compared to what we used to have. Jesus, you know, when you think, about, when you think back to like, it was, either if, it was either a car was on the lift or we were on the lift. And it was so cold down there. Or else we were in front of the car oh, that was on the left. Yeah, and that was mainly just the Sierra. Like. like, it used to be we spent half an hour setting up between the table and all that, you know. Oh, it took, if we were, if you were at mine for eight, we weren't starting to nine. And like, there the night, for instance, you landed in and we sat and fucked about and dosed about and chatted and had the crack for probably about half an hour before we even started recording. But, like, it used to be, and then you were prepping, at least now the microphones are there, they're set up, everything's grand, good to go, stands there. I really should probably take my transmission jack low out of here and get a proper <laughs> microphone stand though. Take back a number one away. Take back a number one away. <laughs> my transmission stack. Uh, my transmission. <laughs> Your stack. stack. <laughs> my transmission jack is uh, called back a number one. Uh, my fiance is back a number two. The reason why my transmission jack is uh, back a number one is it's the same height, but it doesn't argue back. <laughs> <laughs> so why would you say that the uh, Becca number two would argue back? That's just every fucking woman, is it not? <laughs> no comment. Misogyny. <laughs> no his best. No yes. comment. No comment. Hey. Um, what's new with me? So since the last podcast, I took the car out. Yes, you did. You took Kim down here one evening and pulled everything out of the shed. Well, I don't know. I sort of just had a notion that day. It seems to be whenever I take a notion to do one it. good day in the month of March, uh, apart from today. To be fair. I've barely drove it since took it out. I'm not surprised. Um, like, well, I so I suppose what's new me car out uh, last Sunday attempted to wash it. Yes. Well, I say attempt. It's not like it was that dirty. It was just a fact that I got snow foam around it. Had a snow foam hosed off. I was like, hmm, let me check the old camera that everybody that listens. Mm-hmm. Hopefully you do to us. <laughs> um, see if there's not a cow calving. Yes. And there was feet out. So I was like, ah, ah. another one was born and another ah. one on it. Yes. So then I just, then it was too late. I had to a bring her in, milk her, feed calf, and then see if I just got thrown back over the house. Half washed. I, it hasn't actually been washed yet. Still clean enough looking, to be fair. <sighs> Great the, heights, dirt well, but. The rain we've had well, aye, has that too, right enough, helped aye. wash the hate. dirt off, um, but my mind has went fucking blank. Um, they're not on really much else, I suppose, new, I think. It's cars out for the third time now. Echo. I attempted <laughs> to wash it. And well, if I jump through, I, I actually don't watch either. Um, not like you. Well... I mean, it's just a follow-on from the last podcast. Oh, I can't get my Sierra lower. Oh, it's in coilovers. Oh, I can't get the coilovers to work. Which is genuinely the case. But I'm back now. I bought shorter springs, shorter stiffer springs. Do you normally talk like that? Ah, it's just the way I've talked in the last couple of podcasts. I'm, talk- I'm rehashing the same stuff every time. Like, But I, 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 I talked, like, I think in the last 
Maybe. Actually, there's probably been that, develop- that many developments in the last... Right enough, because it's been three weeks. There's been well, a lot happen. I'll say one thing, right? Yeah. For how low you want to get your car... Yes. Which is, we're talking 10 millimetres. Yes. The severe amount of fucking about that you are doing <sighs> I, I just can't get the evos to go any lower. Like, And, you know, with the way they are standard at the minute, are standard coilovers, you know, and everyone's like, oh, evos go low, evos go low. But I was speaking to Ali, and Ali was like, I but Scorpio hubs are taller. So there's that's already shafting me from the beginning. So that was, um, although whether they are or not, I'm not sure, but I'll just take his word on it. But if they're not, meh. But anyway, so they're, they're nine inch springs. So I went and bought seven inch springs and wound the car up, a, wound it up a little bit. Bear in but mind, they're stiffer. Right. I said to you, so them hubs fit 50 mil yes. struts from bags. Yes. I said to you, Surely to God, post up, cause... I suppose I should probably go back to the start, shouldn't I, and explain everything. So, a couple of weeks ago, right, so I had, B, I had BMW E46 uh, hydraulic rams in my car, lathe down to 50 mil. BMWs are 52. So, I also run BMW E46 strut tops. Right. Right. So, the first thing I did was like... Well, actually, the very first thing I did was I went and got a custom setup made to adapt the E46 strut tops around the Sierra coilovers. Then when I couldn't get low enough, I was like, well, what about BMW E46 coilovers in general? So they're a 52mm hub. So I was like, I wonder if I could beat out the hub at the bottom a bit more to get them in. And I was widening and widening it, and I just was like, I just couldn't level myself if there's some cracks here. Like, you know, it just, it probably was fine. I've heard boys say if you, like, heat them, like widen them out and heat them, it'll be fine. But I just, I just didn't want to do that. And the problem is the bottom of the where it's where the coilover slides into the hub. It's hollow. Like it's a it's a, like maybe a two or three mil steel like shaft. You know, hollow steel shaft. You know, so there's no or tube. So you can't even lathe it down. If you let lathe it down, the whole thing will literally just go boom, because it would just be so weak. So then that put the BMW coilovers out of the question. So then Gary Nickel was down, more than him later, and he brought a set of Bora coilovers. Put them on. And what type of coilovers? Racelands, all the most. And the Mark IV is 50 mil. Mm hmm. Okay. And uh, did that, but the problem there was I would have to do the strut top and all differently. And. Then I was like, right, well, the race lands he gave me were just, like, they're not not for the scrap type of thing. You'd just throw in a car to get it away. But for my car, it's like, right, I don't really want to run these because they're well used. So that was okay. I was like, right, do you know what? I'll maybe look about buying a set of new cheap-ish Mark V Golf or Bora coilovers. So went to Motorsport and Spares in Balmina. They had a set of Mark Vs. But... Yes, they would have fit it. They were 50 mil. But the next problem was that they still... I wanted to run a stiffer spring. Because I spent the money in the stiff springs to like be low but not have all this movement. And like, and I thought about it. I was like, look, I'm going to be spending a couple of hundred quid on these coilovers. Then I'm going to have to go and get a new adapter made for the strut top. And it's just kind of like, do I really need all this hassle? So I was like, do you know what? I might just bite the bullet, put the shorter coilovers in, because it's only going to go to dubshed. It'll still be safe, just drive easy enough. And then after that, like, the car is going to be going back out to go to Alley to get dyno and all anyway. So in the meantime, I have now started speaking to BC. Oh, very good. Yes. So I've started speaking to BC. So. I mean, it would be nice if they just give me them, but they're obviously not going to do that. Like so. No, no, they're not. Um, so the night I was down, you were saying about the ten mil, because that was all it really was. Yeah. Um, I said, sure. Instead of trying to buy, you know, a set of Raceland Mark V or Mark VI front coilovers or full set, why not try and get something that's for the scrap heap just to put into it to try it? Well, that's what I have down there. With the Mark IVs. Are they literally the same thing? Yeah. So Mark IV Borel going to Mark V Golf? Yeah, they're 
50 mil the stru- top's different but the bottom of the hub's the same oh right well then I stand corrected so um, they're all the, they're all the same at the bottom but then I would have to go I'd have to go and get Brian to make me up yet another setup look if I'm bait that's what I'll do that's what I'll probably do just to run them just to thread them to screw them down a wee bit and get Brian to make me up something quickly because he'll do it because he's good that way but I I just don't want to be pissing money away like all these coilovers I've beat like the BM and the the, the Boris ones like I got them for nothing you know just because they, they were they're like look just take them and try them like you know so I haven't really wasted now the springs cost me £60 yeah and they weren't even that they were only like Forty pound, and then VAT, and then postage from the UK to here seventeen pound fifty. Okay, but I wasn't going to get them anywhere else that I knew would be come at the right time. So I'll see how they get on. I'll try driving them, and if there's too many bangs or whatever out of them, okay, maybe I'll look on the trailer in the car to dub shed or Did something like that. Did you ever try your current front Evo coilovers with your new uh, wheel and tire setup? Hmm. Is there enough? Of a gap when you do, I have the cam. Go that lower. I have the camber adjusted. She's in, <coughs> she's in a wee bit more. <coughs> Excuse me. I've pulled the camber in a bit more. Fair enough. I uh, only by maybe like a degree and a half. So, um, it does. And then with the one nine fives, it just looks so much nicer. To be honest, I could probably get away with run, running them Raguna static, which you'd said to me at the start you should do that, and I was like, no, you can't. But now I'm looking at it, I'm like. I maybe could get away with that. Well, I had the photo that I showed you, and you probably have a photo too. It was whenever we drove onto the boat on the way over to England. Mm-hmm. And on the way home, you actually drove onto the boat slightly lower. Yeah. No. I left her decked on purpose, and I drove her home low as well. Because I didn't want to touch. No, I, w- I purposely done that. Like, And it looked well. Well, like... The only thing is, I would for say... Me, for me, like... Most fitment cars, when you're in the likes of a show where that, ah, it looks well, your arch is in between the lip and the tyre, it's great. But then whenever you see them driving, they're like four by fours, just big wheels. Yeah. I thought, well, to me, I was never personally a fan of that, everybody to their own. Uh, because you got your arches and your rear quarters pulled, it, it I could, could carry it off. I could drive a bit lower, but... Yeah, no, I could drive a bit lower, but it's still... I don't know, I was always... Maybe it was possibly because of the camper too. Yeah. I was always that sort of scared about damaging it, but now, like as I said, I had the Speed Hunter feature, and that's, I cracked my arch with that. But that wasn't Kane's fault, obviously. I could, so I haven't even had a chance to get that fixed yet, just because I've been wanting to do one thing at a time. This is something I'm trying this year. Like, I've ordered new rear brakes and all for it. They haven't come yet. I've done a couple of things. There's a couple of pulleys needing sorted on the engine, need a new tensioner. Got the alternator tested because she was about whenever I hit the limiter. Just only when you hit the rev limiter, I lost purse steering with the electric purse steering. So um, got the alternator tested, took the alternator out, got it tested. And it was, I thought, like, this would be the problem, answer my problem. But no, it didn't. But when I took the alternator off, my. Well, you've just interrupted us, my podcast. You scared the fuck out of me. Same. And we're back in the room because, unknown to us, Connor Kelly has landed in, who was joining us for the further part of tonight's conversation, but we're already in mid-flow with this, so unless you just want to jump in and join us and pull up a... Which seat do you want to sit on? Well, you better teleport to there, then. All right, fuck it. You can stay out till we're done, then. And... uh, (laughs) But anyway, like I don't normally get scared, but that scared the fuck out of me. Pulled the alternator off, and that was fine. Then realised that my the tensioner was she like she cracked, and I was like, oh, yes, I okay. That. So checking the alternator done me a favour because can you imagine that that tensioner just cracking and when you're mad driving like not just, good. No, wouldn't be good. So. I don't, so then I'm waiting for all the end parts to arrive I'm waiting for the brakes to arrive And I'm just going to try and bash out everything at once As is kind of the plan for that And then the other new thing I did Was I went to the Drift Games bash Oh who was that? Very wet It looked it But it was class Honestly there's something really nice about it because It's, it's Drift Games Invitational remember? That's right yeah Invitational So I went to the Drift Games Invitational It was actually really good crack despite being incredibly wet Out of curiosity You know the way it's like an event Where there wouldn't actually be that many people at it 
Do you know what? It was nearly nice. That That's what I mean. It was like, a lot more chill. I like um, you weren't fences everywhere. No, and you could go and down around the pits and look at all the cars and everything. And there, like everybody's about, like you know, every and everybody's friendly. Like, and I was chatting to Arn Retrogarage for like an hour, and then Kieran Stack as well was with him. Um, and I was chatting to him for a while too. Like, and just even everybody's about, like you know, like Adam O'Connor like walks by and is like, well, it's, it's nice to nearly be wrecked. Not recognized. Cut makes me sound like a knob. Mr. Famous but, here. You know, like it kind makes me sound like a knob. But like you know, people you are like, a knob. Oh, where they, yeah, well, that, that, that goes without saying, Connor. Thank you. But it's like one of the things where you're, uh, you've met them before, and like just a lot more chilled. Nobody was stressing compared to like you go to LZ Fest or any of them ones, and everybody's kind of running about with like the vein in their forehead, kind of pulsating because everybody's like fuck at all times. Well, they are. We are not. Well, we're not. Like, but um, <coughs> we were, like we were saying, like just like it, just seeing it, like it was like there was just lots of cars and track at one time. And it was just really enjoyable to watch. Now, if the weather had been better, admittedly, I probably would have stuck about for a bit longer again. And because it was wet, there was a few people were like sliding off, and then you have to get the recovery lorry and all in and get them out. And uh, but to be honest, there was no real bad driving. A couple of couple of offs, but like Jesus, if I went well, down, I'd be aye. sliding off as but well. It's an invitational for a reason, so that you don't have someone that maybe hasn't the driving skills of some other folk Correct. and. As you say, like, were they not saying the last bash they had? Like, there was only, like, say, combined an hour and a half or possibly an hour track time because yeah, so, so many, many folk people kept, like, sliding off and, like, in one run, four cars went off. Like, to be fair, slowing the, probably the rain slowed everything down a bit, which probably makes it slightly better, whereas people might be coming in. Like, if it was a bit drier, people might be coming in a bit faster and then pulling the hero brake and going, oh, fuck. The next thing, they're backwards into the gravel trap. Like, you are in car X. <laughs> All the time, all the time. I'll never forget driving into um, that that year at Jap Fest, and then we were driving around it, and we were like, <laughs> <laughs> "There's a gravel trap I always go off in." And then but, I'm like, "This feels a bit wider, you know, than it is in the but game." But it is hundred percent. The the Mondello Park and Car X is very hard to come on at full speed. Whereas, like, not that I could do it any better in real life. Absolutely not. <laughs> to be fair, maybe <laughs> it's because our driving skills and virtual uh, are still shit. Are still Yeah, shape, yeah. Yes. That's also that's also fair. Um, but I uh, do. You, have you remembered if there's anything new? You apart from that, there. I'm just still mostly milking cows. But you're um, doing everything this week. Yes, yes. Uh, so whenever this comes out, hopefully um, the old boy enjoyed his break away. He's taking a wee break away. Say, hopefully the old boy comes back and it's like, <laughs> me too, Connor, me too. <laughs> That's what a dark humour, isn't it? That's where we're at. Aye, aye. Yeah. yeah. Will we move on to the main topic? Well, surely I. Uh, why not now? I will surely, yes. Oh, I thought you said I will <laughs> shortly and I was like... Why? What else are you hitting on? So I'm going to do a bit of editing magic here, but uh, our guest for this week's podcast Michael's is Michael. T- pel- <laughs> no, I'm going to break the fourth wall first, as I always do. That's right. And uh, our guest just joined us. I actually scared the shit out of the fucking pair of us because we were mid recording this. The, and, the, like the watch, and the door opened. The door just slowly opened, and then bounced Connor Kelly, and we were just like, well. Both ways having mid heart attacks because we didn't know what. <laughs> the f- I actually thought it was my mom at first, and I was like, "Bitch, do you not know we're fucking recording here? <laughs> Get out, mom!" <laughs> you would hardly call your mother a bitch, <laughs> not to your face. <laughs> and so this will be to your face if she watches it. Yeah, I don't think my mom watches the podcast. Actually, that <laughs> like, was fair play, good woman, Patricia. But like, you know, like I'm, I, she, I bet she, she probably thinks I swear too much on it. In fact, she's definitely heard me playing out TikToks and said that's a lot of swearing. And I've just been like, I am who I am. I'm 30 year old now, mum. <laughs> I can do what I want. But yes. With unreason. <laughs> to add to what you're saying, you will teleport. I'm going to your- teleport to this seat. Connor Kelly's now going to be in this seat, and I'm going to be fucking raging because I've warmed this seat for Connor. <laughs> no, Connor Kelly's going to be in the guest seat, and I'm going to be there. Well, then I'm even more raging because that means now you've formed this seat for you. <laughs> right. Cut in three, two, one. So, with that lovely seamless transition, I've done my ad and magic. This is an idea me and Connor had talked about, like, probably even before we did the first recording when we're coming up with ideas. But it's, I guess, with everything coming on, like, you know, it was we, like last year we were talking about the slurry and then we got talking about silage and we got talking about, like, the There's car shows. There's only so much you want to hear us talk if shite about. If we were to do in that, and re- well, literally, if we're talking slurry, it would be literally talking shite. But yes, good, good getting on there with the pun there, Michael. Oh, fuck up. Anyway, um, we. There's. Literally, we'd be hashing it out again. So, 
this is something we thought we'd do we'd get through last year but didn't and basically it was kind of like a more in-depth talk more <laughs> in-depth topic on cult cars and cult car scene and we've now got Connor Kelly with us and Connor's one of our best friends and Connor's been well you've been in, you've been I've been a friend of the pod from the start <laughs> Connor I think is not me- a friend of you Michael a friend of the pod <laughs> only a friend I think you've been mentioned in 28 out of the 31 podcasts I think it is it's something like that so like you know plays a big part I don't I say play a big part behind the scenes that's just all the shit you send us but no Connor Connor was in the D-Turbo back in the day whenever uh, I was running seen it on TikTok one. As well, and there's a video of Connor's car. So if you go back in the day, is your car the original blackface? I maybe can't say that. Uh, it is. I looked this evening eight years ago. Eight years ago, I yeah. was, it was Port Easter Monday. Easter no Easter Sunday. It was a port. It, it was, was on the port. 20, it was Easter Sunday, 2015. It was Easter Sunday, 2015. That's nine years ago. Yeah, that's mental. Fuck. Well, it will be. Me coming, I. Right. So we decided that. Is that what they now call it? What? The blackface. Well, that's what people have been calling it, but I don't know if we can actually get away with saying that. But, um, but I suppose then I've kind of good old NNA. I've started was the first ever TikTok for us that done well. That that actually yeah, do fairly well. Did quite well actually. And then you said, "Fuck me, there's a chaser." Yeah, that that was after that. But um, I suppose then we get on to the main point is so yeah, back to like cult cars etc. Cars that in this country have a like a kind of a bit of a culture behind them, hence saying cult. The sort the of car that whenever you're 16 now, you would want to own. They're just like when you think of the Irish car scene, what do you think of? A D Turbo is going to come straight up. So when we say D Turbo, like, you know, literally you turn to a non car person, and like, or a non car person, like, sees you driving about somewhere in like your lower car, the first thing they'll say to you is, she's no D Turbo. Like yeah. they don't even know really what they are, but they just know they're just that well known. Like people are just going to turn around, turn around and say stuff like that to you, like because it just it, it just has that effect. It was like a religion. About pretty much like yeah, and back in the day, <clears throat> like every young fella that was from a farm and a few people I'm sure from a town. I the glory boys and all as well. Like they, uh, you got one whenever you were seventeen because they were attainable, very attainable. And a few tankers, and they made loads of smoke. They made a good bit of noise, and they went brave and well. They went all right. But even you think about like Connor, me, and you talk. We've talked about this. I don't know how many times over. Like even back in the day, like on Bebo and stuff. Like one of my skins was uh, like a white Zara on Azevs. Cahal McGoldricks. Yeah, or maybe yeah. possibly was Cahal's or it not. Was. Not Cahal's. Maybe it was maybe Johnny's or one. Yeah, uh, it was one of McGoldricks, I but like I remember like even back through the days of like slammed and screwed. Like we're talking back like twenty ten, twenty eleven on Facebook. And like all it was it was like the McGoldricks and like Kieran McQuillan and like Fergal McGee and all them boys posting up all their cars. And you would just get fucking rouse underneath. You don't see any of that anymore. It's just Rouse about what? Who's the fastest? Who's the, who's fastest? the lowest? Who's the fastest? Like it was always like, oh no. Mine's she's the quickest one out there, and it's like, no, you weren't that quick. I went by at the elk, and it's like, oh, sir, that was a bad day. I had five people in the car, and all this here, and boys. Honestly, it would start getting heated. But like. More importantly, is a one of only a few cars, very few cars in Ireland, that or Northern Ireland, whatever you want to say. You know the car not by anything else, bar number plate. Everybody knows <sighs> D turbos by number plates. Literally, well, I don't know because I would say something similar about twin cam. Yeah, that's what I mean. There's only a few cars like that. And coupes, but yeah, def- true. Twin say cam was a D turbo owner with a whiplash claim. That's what, yeah, it was. It was like the Sierra was the perf, the poor farmer's step it, up. It was the, the poor man's twin cam. And the D and the D and the twin cam was uh, the, the poor man's was, was, was the was the D turbo man because well, nobody goes. Like, oh, did you see KWC ASC hundred? Uh, that'll probably come in in a bit. I reckon, Pro, well, I reckon that'll come in in a bit. Definitely not for now. Same with Mark Four Golf. I've never really heard anybody talk about a Mark Four Golf as. <sighs> no, not really. But uh, the first thing that comes to the head is like NNA, mm-hmm. and everybody ultimately knows we're talking about your six or FGJ was or buying like nobody RUV. knew me. Hmm? Nobody knew me. Nobody just I was knew like, the car. Yeah, <laughs> RUV hashtag free free RUV and all that there. Like it was, you know. And Pascal now is a new another D Turbo. That's right. He not, he's not even lowering it or not, I'm sure he's not. I think it has. Oh. Yes. Oops. 
Well, like, to not lower a D turbo is. It's kind of sacrilege when you it. It is, yes. But it's. Because like from factory, I seen one, it was up and it was standard. And they're the one of the only cars that just look, in my opinion, completely stupid when they're nose diving. They are the car behind Feltspec. Yes, but me and you both said this, Connor. Is we all, we put bigger tires in the rear, mm. even though you're decked to level them out. Aye. well, just to take the bounce out of it too. I well, that, that too as well. So your prob- suspension travel was mostly just your tire. tire? What well, suspension it, travel? It, it was tire <laughs> and another wee bit of rubber. Did were you, were you three nicks or four nicks? Three. Were you three? I was only three as well. Like, but mine's I couldn't. Whenever I was driving mine, like it was a you just heard the noise of the tire grind in the mud flap the whole time. No, well, I don't know what my noises were, but there were noises. So, to ask a question, what made you buy a D-Turbo Connor? Or mm. what made you buy NNA back in the day? It was cheap. Correct. Cheap very phone. cheap. Cheap phone. Very, very, very cheap. Um, I only bought it down the road. Well, where did it come from? Port Noon. Right now? It, it came out of England. Went to Port Noon, blew the turbo, went to Dipperstown. Did you buy it, did you buy it from the boy in Port Noon? I did. Was the that tur- non-owner at the time? Mm, it started. <laughs> Doesn't drive. Fair enough. So, so did you buy mine. it with blown turbo? I did, and then ran around Riverstone for the next two, three days buying turbos left, right, and centre to get one that was right. Why were they all just fucked? They were just, I uh, more or less. You yeah. got a good one until you got it home. What turbo did you have in yours in the end? Mine was a '97 Phase One, so that made it. '97 Phase One. Mm-hmm. Mine's '97 Phase Two. Uh, <laughs> mine was one of the last before the crossover. T2. So I had, I, no, I had a phase two engine, phase right. one body, yes, phase one dash, clocks and door cards, uh-huh. phase two seats, phase two boot lid. That's right. Yeah. Yes. That's Mine right. Mine was like a Frankenstein. That's right. And if anybody that doesn't really know what we're meaning, the 306D Turbo came in three facelifts or two uh, original a pre-facelift a facelift and then they re-facelifted it again I guess yeah that's probably the yeah. best way to describe it or just three phases well one, that's two, why we're three. talking about phase one phase two phase three yeah so phase one so well, I suppose we can I because I actually don't that looking up on this and I've asked a few other ones just for to make sure that I'm not completely wrong but the D-Turbo we know it as the D-Turbo like, but it's actually the XUD engine yeah so you had the XUD 7 started in 1982 and that was like the 1.8 so you had them in like the 205 and the 309 and then I think it was 1992 that's when they introduced the XUD 9 yeah. and that's that's the that's the, in both uh, straight and turbo turbo charged variants so, so was the D-Turbo a 1.9 or 2 litre engine it's 1. a 1.9. 1.9. Well, technically, the 1.8s were known as D-Turbos as well. Like, they were, they were all badged as D-Turbos, but the, the, the engine, I suppose, that would be the most famous is the 1.9, the XUD9, and that was in the ZX, that was in the Zantia. Although the Zantia was different because they had a front-mount intercooler. But it was different manifold, just... Aye. It was, aye, it was that's, still that's the same engine, was. different manifold. Yes, it was. Um, so you had... then It was in... So ZX, uh, Zantia... It was in the Zara, it was in the 306, 405, and I don't know anything else. It's weird because there was other, like, there was a Hyundai had an XUD engine in it. Yeah. There was a Lada had an XUD engine in it, and there was. There the, was something else really weird. A Talbot. Uh, like a Finnish Talbot had, and there was an FSO Polonaise, which was a Polish car, which is the worst car in the world. And it had, it had a XUD. The best engine in the world. The best engine in the world. And then there was the XUD 11. Which was the two point one, yeah, the twelve valve that came in the four hundred six. But they were, they were bad. <sighs> Ryan McMahon argues differently, but I know like the fella that bought my car after me when he blew the engine in my car, he put a two point one on it, and she didn't hit as hard. No, as did they not lift the pumps off the two point one pump and put it in the one point nine engine? How have we managed to kill Pat? What do you mean? The f- oh, thing it fell off. Go we'll put him back up there. Oh, right. uh, yeah, I have to pause. pause to well, not to sound stupid or that, but just to come at it, if you're not really sure of them, would you then describe, see from the very start of the XUD engine, mm-hmm. would you class everything, would you call it all just, oh, you have a D turbo? No, because you get straight diesel variants too. Like RAW was straight diesel. Yeah. Or would Hugh Barr now has that car, but that was. Yeah. She was a straight D. Originally. Or would you only really class, if you're talking about, oh, a body turbo, you'd think of 306 or Zara? 
Aye, but then, as I say, he got them on Xantes. Because you got them on really ZX's. You wouldn't really well. say. But a ZX was never known as the Turbo. It was just a ZX, and you were somebody. Yeah. Was I it? like a ZX, but yeah. I, I do. I like a ZX. Like, especially one in Moonstone Blue. Because you wouldn't say. I suppose Deadly. at the end of the day, you wouldn't go, oh, we bought a Turbo. And then somebody say, no, that's you'd call that a 405 sort of thing. I like realistically, if you said you bought a D Turbo, the first thing that would come in my mind is so a 306. Six. Like if, so if I said to someone, oh, like my old D Turbo, I'm automatically talking about my 306. Suppose like twin cam is automatically. Yeah, even though the Sierra is a two liter twin, it's known as a twin cam engine, but people don't call it a twin cam. Like it's just I suppose maybe from Toyota having twin cam 16 down the side of them at the times, probably what they got the name from. But it was. <sighs> You know what? Like they're, they're just, I, like whenever I like people used to kind of look down their nose on them, and I remember like, whenever I first got mine, like I remember talking to a girl at the time and she was like, oh, like they're a heap of shit, and I was like, no, nah, no, nah, trust me, like once you drive it, so I was like, come on, like I was, so I was friends with her, you know, and I was like, uh, I was like, sure, I'll let you take it. That's her run around the roads. So we got out and I was like, here, drive you away. She's a good enough driver, like, and uh, well, us going down the road, she was just like, I literally see why. Grinning from ear to ear. Just, they were like a wee go kart. Yeah. And then the, the noise, just the, the, and the smoke out of them. Like, I only had ever drove yours, but for me, the one thing that came to you mind blew was. the fucking injector into mine. <laughs> no, it was the gear linkage. Oh, no, I blew the injector over Yes, you did. You the one the thing about a detour engine is there's not many diesels that are rev happy. You know, you've oh, good thought response. They just blip. They just you know, blip for it's the days. Fact, yes. So it's like, you know, if you go into an IS200 and you were trying to blip it or fuck about with it that way, because she's not that throttle happy, if you get me, whereas you jump in a Type R or a Twin Cam or D-Turbo, you can blip them away like fuck. They were... They're a fun car to drive. <sighs> they are. They are. They just are. Like, I... You know what? Like, um... Like... Gary Nichols was around at mine there a couple of weeks ago, leaving off them Bora coilovers. And he has that Zara now, MKE, MKG. The green? Laser yeah, green? The laser green Zara. Yeah. That and is I, a tail of It's car. class. But I was like, I was like, Gary, I was like, come on, like, can we go with her on? And like, I, he was like, aye. And you could tell he was like, oh, deadly, like, <laughs> let's go. And uh, I jumped in and I was like, right, sure, I'll do the loop. We'll go down to like McKeon's, do the Claddy loop. And like, we were in that and I just felt like I was fucking 19 again like I was like this is class but that's no way they're cult cars because they're about four and a half fucking grand now it's not even that I bought mine for £375 bought mine for 350 I paid I hired a tiller for £25 paid Joe Rogers £25 to come and left it and take it home and that was it and I think at that stage I was buying turbos for £20 a piece that's how I ended up with so many they're that's just cheap fun do you, do you know what I'm gonna I, when just when I have you here? This is quite funny. I knew you'd owned that car for a long time. A long time. Because uh, <laughs> me and you uh, both used to go out with some other girl, and she paid me off for you. <laughs> <laughs> I so why do your sex was better? <laughs> and I remember, I remember, like I was like, who is this cunt? Like you know, whenever you're like fucking sixteen, seventeen, I was fucking raging. I was like fucking D turbo driving prick, looking through the photos. Like, love to know that we'd end up becoming really close friends not that long after. Unfortunately, <laughs> just cause so I, I, cause I, so I knew you'd owned your car for like a lifetime. I got it because that's what I knew you as. I was like, you're the boy that owns the, you're the, you were the boy that owned the black D turbo, yeah. yeah, and then. The next, well, we'll talk about that in a bit. The next, encounter. I, I had no intentions of MOTing it at the time, it was just buy it, fix it, sell it. That's all I thought, and then I just hung on to it and hung on to it and hung on to it. Was she a clean car? Uh, it was, it was, was all right, like. at back driver quarter. Somebody, I don't know, I got it, and there was eyes upon hanging out of it, and I never bothered fixing it. Oh, really? Ever? Yeah. No, never. You never seen it, it was that small, but was it lowered and all that crack? When no, I got it bog no. standard with really five. The Turbo Sport Alloys. Was it the Harriers? Yeah. Yeah. Blades. Are they the same? Yeah. All right. I thought they were Harriers. To be fair, that's another thing about D Turbos. Like, all the standard wheels. They're kind of like Civics. Uh, aye. Like, well, like, you have, well, fair enough. Most people obviously put either Savaras or Alessios or, you know, if you have loads of money, Lions and that thing on them, but. They are one of the only cars that really do suit standard wheels. That takes the wee wheels. 
Aye. Like, we wheels bike profiles. Aye. Like Mark Fours are totally, and Boras, everybody's starting to go back to that style with the long beaches and the Bora Sports and that. And even um, Bora Highlines. Stuff. Aye, Montreal's, aye. And but yes, as you're right, the Civics, but you know, you wouldn't exactly go. It would be more across the water they would do, the likes of Big 17s. Do you know what? No, not no. even. Like, you look in the. You look in, like, the likes of the owners' clubs and Facebooks there. At Facebooks. <laughs> Facebook there. Like, them boys, they. A lot of them love our style. Yeah. Like, well, until well, it comes to three or sixes. No, like, but there's boys in Scotland and England and all, and they, they, there's boys in Scotland have felt stick stickers, like, literally yeah. stickers saying felt spec in their back window. Like, we thought that at the time because Nermi and you went to French car show that time, like, they all had theirs, like, Lord, like forty mil, like forty mil, like four mil, and we made us <laughs> jump out of the back of a Clio so they could go over a speedboat at McDonald's. <laughs> I was like, "How long am I not here?" I mean, because like I remember, he's like, "Oh yeah, we've got this," and I was like, "Yeah, this is this is his," and I was like, "How do you fucking drive that?" And I was like, "Just drive it." You, ju- ju- you just, but they couldn't understand the word I said. <laughs> <laughs> it was fucking brilliant. <laughs> We uh, uh, well, we can get that one about two, but anyway, you were saying so. Then you had the car. I uh, had no intentions of actually doing anything here. You were just going to fix it up, sell it on. So just fix it and flip it. So then, what happened? I broke my wrist that yeah, time. Yeah, you broke your wrist just broke before your seventeenth birthday. And then that put a stop. To it. it might have been my sixteenth birthday. I can't really mind, but it put a stop to it because I had to go get an operation. And by the time I finally come round to getting my driving test. I got the CO6 MOT maybe the week of my driving test. I was like, right, happy days. Boom, two and a half grand insurance. Oh. Mm-hmm. Mm. So that put a stop to that for another short while. I didn't think they were that bad to endure. I went fully comp my own name. Oh, at 17. Straight yeah. off. And uh, I suppose even back then that was big, I read big, enough, big I was 2300 the first year in the 207. Yeah. 18. Fully comp. And I was 1.9. And, and, and I was CO6. 6. You know, it was just... Any insurance problem? company in Northern Ireland knew what I was for doing. Aye. Like, realistically, when did 306 Phase 1's first come out? 1982. No, 93, the ZX. Because, like, 93 the 90s 306. would have been, obviously, they would have been the hot hatch. Yeah, they would have been. You know, I found <laughs> auto-traders, and they were maybe 8, 9, 10 grand still. I remember seeing auto-trader, like, a many years ago. This is an off-topic, but I remember it was like... This is maybe back in like 2008, and like Alexis AS like 200 was like 13 grand because yeah. <laughs> it was only like a three year old car, and then it's one cam like three grand. Aye, and now um, it's like complete role reversal. It's completely like changed. Like again, that's well. You can now they call them cult because if you think about it, there is folk out there that's buying decent ice cars and just. Like completely, do, like doing them to the teeth. They top are. To bottom. Like a few. Mm-hmm. S- uh, bringing them back top they're, to bottom. They're, they're, like, they are a car now. I think that people are actually going like, like I'm going to restore this. Ten it's years a collector ago. now. Uh, yeah. It's a collector. Hundred percent. They collect. Sorry, they collect the memories and now they're collecting the cars. Uh, but it's like that's what happens. I think that's when the cars really start to go up in value. You're now starting to see that with Lexus. Yeah. Boys are now taking Lexuses and doing like red restos on them, and it's just like whoa. And yeah. that's like that's when you start seeing who oh, no, that's a real clean car. Then everybody starts having to. Make the and everybody cleaner. thinks theirs is clean. Yeah, and plus, well, you don't really see them about anymore. So whenever you do see one about, like, I like we'll put it this way: I was in your car many a night in Mar felt in that. Yeah. And you never really appreciated it. You and didn't. I no, was like, oh, until they were gone. what's the difference in the phase one, two, and three? But see now, see the boxy shape of the phase one. Back then, it's a total timeless design. It's never going to look bad. It was just aggressive. Phase ones, I for a long time, I always liked the phase three HDA shape, but no, nah, like no phase one. Phase one. Hurts. Phase one, hundred percent. It's the but phase one on cyclones. Mm. Say so like the phase ones on cyclones. No, nope. you're a Vulcan boy. Vulcan stealth. Vulcan Ste- well, stealth is always a given. Like. Stealth those are given for anything. I like stealth some. So far as don't look too bad on them. Not in a phase one. What are you calling Three thousand and eight. No. Not in a phase one. On a phase three, absolutely. Not in a phase one. Unless it was looked well on them. Not in a phase one. Phase two, phase three, mainly phase well, three. Phase twos thing. didn't, but every phase two had a phase three front bumper, or so it didn't matter. Phase yeah. twos is kinda like the R thirty three skyline. Because yes. R thirty two 
Deadly R34 Nice And then R33 Is kind of like The ugly middle child well, put it this way I had a phase 2 I always liked the phase 2 no, They always smiled at no, you No I had a phase 2 And all the bumpers And all were pulled off her And I, I Mine was HDA kit Well like. that's the other thing too It wasn't too hard To just interchange them If you wanted to change A phase 2 to a phase 1 There was a bit more work on it Because There's you had two wings You need to cut two lugs off The bottom of the wings And the bumper Or not the And the bumpers obviously Headlights were different Yeah And the bonnet yeah. Whereas a phase two to phase three, it was headlights. But it wasn't bumpers. fully headlights, it just was the headlights to leave it looking right. Yes. You could get away without doing it. Mm-hmm. I got mine black masked when we were yeah. done that that time and it looked classic. I loved it. Um, you couldn't do it in a phase one because the two wee candles just give up then. Yeah. No, so. Definitely not. You eventually got her out then, your motor. Eventually. And at this point, did you do any screwing no, or anything? I drove to Cookstown that night. Oh. And then came home. Back to sit in the shed and find my sledge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so and you drove her standard then? For, for one, for you had one night only. <laughs> <laughs> Got stopped and everything that night. Couldn't believe it. Only had it out. Didn't show up in their data that I was MOT'd. Oh. It was within the two weeks because she'd lay off the road for so long. I don't even think I got taxed. Oh. Well, this, don't this care was back tax. in the day of tax desks. Like, so it wasn't hard for them to find it out. Oh, I right enough. I forgot they'd done away with them in like 2018. They still have them in the south, it's so weird. Like, you look at cars in the south and you still see all the taxes. Like, they have insurance desks as well. Ah, it's just like you I think they insurance desk. So, buried it. No, I didn't. I went to next to start off with because I wasn't gay. I wasn't brave. Did you put coilovers in the front or just lowering springs? No, I think I had lowering springs. Are you sure? Aye. Did you not go to sex coilovers? No, I had lowering springs that time. And then I bought TA Technics somewhere down the line. That's what mine were too. They lasted about three months. Aye. The only reason they lasted about three months because they put 12 speed bumps between my house and Zipperstown. Yes. That's so bad. I from straw, like the oh. whole way to Zipperstown. So bad. Like. And then I bought two six GTA coilovers. Yeah. Which meant that it was for a petrol engine, so the diesel engine was a lot heavier. So, so it this just all pushed everything way down. Ah, uh, but there's other tricks and tips. You used to be able to grind the knob off the coilovers and slide yeah, them and move it down. five mil. <laughs> yeah, Michael moved it about an inch and a half. <laughs> <laughs> and I warned him, don't. Oh, but do you mind how low they went in mine? Ah, was you can't bad. drive out of the shed. I could no. driving out the shed. I think they spun out of the shed because the, the, the chassis was lying on the ground. The wheels were just sitting there. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> she looked like she was on hydraulics. Like she was buried. And I was right, the front splitter. Shame you cause can't do that with a Sierra, Michael. No, I can't get her low enough. Yet. But, uh... So this was 2013 the then, you out in the road. Oh, I don't know what year it was. Your well, assuming you got your license in 2012 and you were seven. No, I don't know. I waited a while of mine. I can't mind what age I started driving. You see. So I. So then, roughly 20 well 2012, you were tinkering where. In 2013 then. Um, when did you start screwing at her then? Mm, probably 2011. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. I think it was 2011. I found out how to do it. Good giddy. And then got obsessed with smoke. Thought this was brilliant. But it is brilliant. And then my Allen key rung. Oh. Oh. And then I had to do something else. I had to put a new pump on it then. The Allen key broke off and said, Was she a Lucas or a yeah, No, she was a Lucas. This, this is how I know it. it was a phase two engine. And the chassis. Because mine was a Lucas pump as well. The engine code matched the codes on the windows, the two pop out windows. Right. There was something about that, or it was a wonder where the, the engine code matched somewhere. That's how I knew it was the original engine. Um, got a new pump on it then. So everything was original, bar the pump and turbo mm. at that stage. And then I done what you done and blew an injector, mm-hmm. but blew it to pieces. So I had to take the head off. Did I blow an injector or did I blow a heater plug? You blew. A heater plug up there, did you not? Yeah. I blew a heater plug. That's I blew an injector and it just disintegrated for oh. whatever reason. So I had to pull the top off. end. Hmm? Ruined the top end. No. Though. No. I happened to catch it in time. Don't know how. It didn't break damage, nothing, break nothing. Head came off and I dropped. Arn Cassidy was chatting about ARP head studs at that stage. So I was like, mm-hmm. oh, this sounds brilliant. Done that. Brilliant. Well, it would mean you could wind a bit more boost under. Next thing I done was bought a boost gauge. You had the boost hand, didn't you? Uh, there was something over it. Uh, you had a boost, you had a boost ten as your boost gauge. I remember yeah. that. I remember that. And uh, then we got an under and started screwing at waistgates. 
We don't mind. We Without sounding and again buttoning in, how do you screw a D turbo? You take the rear view mirror out of it, pop it down in, pop, there's a wee black cap in front of the pump, anti clockwise take it off without breaking it, which is very hard done because it's only threaded. Mm-hmm. There's only, you can only screw it back in again. It's like one of them American or the Australian oil plates where you can't, you know, the lugs is cut off to reverse it. Yes. Yes. And reach in. I think it's a four, my Allen key. Four, six. Four, I think. I think it's a four. Reach in and screw it clockwise and try and remember how many turns it is. They're usually really tight. Is it not like a quarter turn? No. They just go until they stop. I got a full turn of mine. Oh. And a wee bit more. Oh. Yeah. Like, I think mine was. We done mine. We screwed the pump mine a bit. Did I screw yours? No. Nah. Who done that? Barry someone. It was a friend of McGuire's. Right. And he done he advanced the timing a wee bit on her. Yeah. And then I see the wastegate. Do you adjust the screw in there or do you adjust, adjust them a little bit basically so they it's harder for them to open? Uh, something like that. Some are bent or you bend it or something like that. Bend it, jack her up and put a block of timber underneath it. All I know was that basically she basically found the wastegate harder to open yeah because I, I haven't felt a bit turbo in I'd say 10 years like yeah. 9 years so I'm kind of away from all that but I'm sure if I speak to anybody else they'd be able to tell me straight away I was the exact same I, I used to be able to put my hands on it till now I would have to sit down and be like what do I need well I was chatting to Hugh Barr and because he's still very much into them yeah and I was asking him I was like so what would you do if you want it to go like fast so he sent me a list of basically if you're for tuning them like your ways of tuning because everybody obviously you screw the turbo you screw the pump and you advance the timing like that's kind of what everybody does but then when you want to take it up to the next stage people normally say like go for so 11 mil pump was always a big one yeah that's out of a transit aye and the governor ground down on it yes so aye the the you got a ground you ground down the boost pin yeah um, so she just got diesel the whole yes, time. Yes, and uh, he has down here. The boost compensator was adjusted as well. Yeah. So that was an R thing. Uh, on a Lucas, that was a wee, that was an Allen key, on a plate, and I screwed mine that far out. It fell out, so I got a wee plate made. Oh. Just to sit over it, and all you had to do was put an O ring in. It's sealed. Right enough. So mine was full, full open at the boost. Yours was, the was boost very smoky though. Yeah, that's why. Yours that's was why very, it just very smoky the whole time. The whole time, because I never seen one smokier than yours. Like, because no. I can remember the night me and you were going through Kilray. Yeah, <laughs> one of the best nights of my life. It's just me and you trying to cog fifth gear, going through the town. Left foot breaking. Left foot breaking, trying to get as much smoke out of the car, and then the next night the Vosel landed in Kilray. Done everybody. Done everybody. Do you mind everybody. going to the go karting in Kilray? Oh, was I, was thinking, you, I you, was thinking about this too. You overtook the boy on the bike, and he just put her in fifth and just I'm smoked him out. Oh, I don't know. I used to do that too. Like. Do I mind on the way home from go karting one night too? You were behind me in the polo. Yes. I think Stephen Tom was with me. Could well be now. And my horn fell off. <laughs> Just fell off, rattled it underneath her. Standard. I'm nearly sure you went back and found it and you were like, this is what it was, it's okay. And I was like, oh shit. Was it him or Marty? No, I'm nearly sure it was you. Can't mind doing it, but possibly. I don't think Marty wouldn't have stopped. Mm, maybe not, no. Well. No, I wouldn't. No. What Marty else? would have done by giving you the finger. <laughs> What else has he said here? So um, he talks about removing the polo mount. Uh, I have no idea what that mm. means. So, and then he says for Conrad's boys would have used. Now I've heard this as well. The two liter HDA sixteen valve yeah. Conrad's heard that too. A lot of boys use that. It can like a cheap upgrade, or you could get the forged rods. He says max speeding rods, which I don't know how I'd feel about that. Or apparently you can get a set of smileys, which is a set of rods you were able to get for them that had like a smiley face dimpled under them. Never, never heard of that either. Too long out of the game. I don't know. Like, a, I'd say the technology from whenever we were doing them compared to now. Like, I'll I'll talk through what some of the boys have sent me here. I got a few big specs just because I was like, oh well, what's a, what have we got that's actually like, pretty cool here? Like, just to show how far we can push these because, like, obviously we're talking about them. Like, you, you want to know some good examples. Yeah. And then he was saying basically for a turbo TDO four. I had a lot of one. boys to do. I had one and put it on, and I thought it was more sluggish. I took it off. I had a T2 in my car. Surely, yeah. bigger turbo, though, would be more sluggish. But I had the front mount and everything. 
I had everything set right. How do you from when? Did yeah. you use his auntie and let my fold? I still have it. Did you have a front wheel? I don't I know. I'd only had it on for about three weeks and it just killed. It wasn't the same car, so I was like, to pull that all off. Seriously, so she would have preferred running the, the top mount. Yeah. She'd have been more well, responsive. A hell of a lot more. There was no lag standards where it's the bigger turbo and bigger everything. She just lagged and lagged and lagged and, and then, then took off. But, if, yeah. but still thought, I still thought whenever, whenever she eventually took off, it was still worse than before. And I was like, nah, it's no good. I think boys could run like a 406 inlet or something as well on them. There was something like that, yeah. And then you get some real mad bastards that like a gearbox mounted turbo. So yeah. that's, that's what you call the sidewinder setup. Um, where basically you pull, she's she off the back of the head. If oh, you're she, no, the exhaust is off the yeah. back, I so she comes round off the back. So it's like a ta- it's like a, a side mount sort of thing. Basically, I you, I, that's I, the way you turbo a Civics and all that kind yeah. of. Yeah, exactly. That's what that's what a Civic one would be a sidewinder manifold. So that's exactly the same thing. So literally pull them round, then basically the gearbox sits on top of the or the turbo sits on top of the gearbox. Kept the colour and everything too because they were getting there. Mm-hmm. And then you'd run, as I say, you'd run the, the Zantia set up, get a proper big front one in her. Um, ARP head studs would be, as you say, then the next thing you would have done. They were bad for boiling, so I always allowed putting the big front mount in front of a radiator was not a good idea. <sighs> they weren't getting the airflow. People say that, but then the next thing you need to do is adjust your fans. Yeah, I just have them on the whole time. I run them to a switch. Yeah. That's what I did in my car. I'm pretty sure. Was yours not running to a switch as well? No. Mine are brilliant. My car was brilliant. It never, it never boiled the whole time I had it until Mine's, the very last. I can remember when I didn't have the fans done on mine. I can remember getting stuck in traffic outside. Uh, do you remember the old M2 before it turned? Before they done it all yeah. up, where basically yeah. at Randallstown it used to merge into one lane, and I remember there was a crash there. And I most of the times I come off at Randallstown and went out that way. But I was like, oh, I don't want to sit in the traffic at Randallstown. I'll head on up and go that way. And got stuck for ages, and I was just watching the temperature gauge just start to go up. They can sit at a hundred for an hour or two. They're all right. <laughs> I was watching, watching, and watching. I got, I'd say it got to just within kicking distance of a hundred. Like, but to see the second, then I got clear air. Yeah, <laughs> straight back down. Straight, straight back down to eighty-two or something or whatever. That's it was. what I mean about the front mounts. They're choking them. Well, they were choking them. That's what I thought. Probably, well, there maybe is something said for that. Like I know, like obviously, if me running like a front mount and all now in the air and all like. My car never lifts, but then I've got a big alloy rad and all in there too, so go figure. Yeah, the, if it did, you'd have problems. Yeah, like that was, but like, I don't know, I never really knew them to be a car that boiled as long as you... Did the gearbox ever get baller with more power? Or was it all no. clutch? No. Uh, well, I had the clutch out of it, but I had the clutch out of it. <laughs> That's just probably from doing Robax. Yeah. That's what most people did. Yeah. <laughs> did anybody ever put an LSD in them? Probably some uh, English comp. There was, there was a boy, Piggy Power, was big on YouTube. He had one, a black phase two. I think it was 300 and so on, horse and end up. I've never heard of him. Yeah, look him up. I think Darren Jobs, man, do you remember Darren Jobs had the green one uh, with the yellow band that steals? That actually might have been who I'm on about. Darren Jobs? Yeah. Uh, she he, was 300 and so on, horse and end she, up. I don't know if she was. 300, but she, she was twin. She was no, com- twin turbo and everything. Uh, she was compound yeah. turbo. Yeah. Oh, she was insane. That was mad. I remember and that took thing. It, he took it out track days and took it home and maybe drove it home too. That thing was that thing was nuts. He was a farmer. Yeah, well. he just done it in the spare time. Yeah, like the whole idea was it was painted John Deere green with uh, bandit steels, yellow bandit steels. That was cool. Like, no, I'm not. I'm not saying anything like that. Um, I don't think I'm. I'm just thinking. See, see the likes of back in you know 2010s. Yeah. What was classed as a great going D turbo? Cog in second, or some that would probably take on a one thirty. Uh, Bora, Bora, I, I, re- I, well, I didn't race. Uh, Subaru raced me one night, and I left him. I but it was a flat four. My turbo. my three hundred six walked my Bora, my old Bora. Yeah, my three hundred six walked my Raven Blue Bora. So you'd have said a well set up three hundred six would be a one thirty Bora one th- and one thirty Bora, a standard one thirty Bora, and then a one thirty Bora was worked on was beating Type R's. Mm-hmm. So True, but then again, tight R's aren't actually relatively. They were all standard back then too. Yeah, aye, we didn't have the same technology, but boys, like, there's not a fucking slow bore on the road now, apart from mine. A quick tight R was Honda added back then, aye. and nobody was ever thinking of oh turbo in them or anything, you know, or anymore. You know, you just put a, a big exhaust, and that was it. Aye, but like sure back then, like but uh, like the thing is, a D turbo doing one, say one thirty brake, like that's a far lighter car than a bore. Oh, yeah. So you're part of wit. 
And then boys were saying like uh, We wheels too We no wheels them. You were getting more grip More everything Boys were saying like um, You know like Oh she's quick She'd do this But aye she's a far later car So mm-hmm. less weight More freight Kind of sort of thing And then Well I was talking to another lad he, So me and Connor's in a Group chat with all the boys That do the tractor pulling And we ended up talking About 306s the other day Which is kind of how That sparked the whole thing I was like Do you know what We will do this And one of the lads A fella Ryan McMullen Sent his in So he actually put a 2.1 on his Right. The 12 valve I was never set in the 2.1s No neither was but I But he ran the 11 mil Bosch pump He put uh, Isuzu Trooper Injector yeah. nozzles into her So that left her on out Then he says he ran a bigger front mount Converted her to hydraulic clutch And changed the final drive 307 front brakes And 306 rears 306 GTA rears He sa- brakes. He says he was I, I think he got about 160 out of her but 160 of them be sharp enough going. It's like, even the going. torque from a diesel. You know, I think it was she just had left first, second, third, fourth was. <coughs> I think she was high 200s for the well, torque. Well, out of curiosity, then, were they quite a short ratio box? Ah, uh, the, uh, yeah, the, no. the, the straight you know, D's were a short ratio D's box. Were, if you put a straight diesel box and a D turbo, you were beating four everybody and a half to 30 RPM. Beating doing, everybody to 30 mile an hour. Yeah. I think, I think they maxed out at 80 then, was it? No, maybe it wasn't. It wasn't, no, it was less. It wasn't, no, like, you could have probably pulled them to 100, like, but... You were looking for new engines. Aye, you were blowing turbos out of them, like, yeah. aye. She, you'd have been doing, she was doing, like, I think she was doing close to 4,000 RPM at 60 mile an hour. That's basically how, what happens when you put a straight D in them, like. Aye, so they are quite, uh, like... They were built for having fun. They were, they were absolutely, like, they were quite, that's like... Would they be a quick car first... And second, or is it a case of first and second and getting to third for the long First gear? and second were close. Second to third, you got your park. And then third, fourth, you were just moving. <laughs> they were, like, well, first gear was... For burnouts. Burnout gear, like, It was yeah, just your burnout gear. And then the second was your first first gear. burnout gear. <laughs> but, like, so... There's a few other ones. Do you know what? To be honest, I would. I don't know. We're talking that long. We needed a piss break. At risk of causing offence to <laughs> the, the local viewers, the English boys do tend to go a bit more. Not even so much the English boys. Like just the boys on the other side of the water do tend to go a bit more mad. They but were they were track days though. I well, like, do you remember? Do you I remember would, think about it. Back in the day, you got yours at seventeen, eighteen, or sorry, fifteen, yeah. and then that was your first car. It was a gateway car back yeah. in the day. Yeah. Over, 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 you know. Yeah, it was cheap fun. You're fed a screw. You're fed to get about one thirty horse or so out of it with, with what you nothing. Did. Yes, nothing. A handful and of tools. then you moved on, say to a rear wheel drive, like an A thirty six, or you bought or a Type R, yeah. or Sierra. Well, if you were lucky enough, you got a whiplash claim and got your money. <laughs> 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 I didn't get mine. <laughs> but God, I tried. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just sitting on the road, just going, go on, come on, please. Hit me. Out of curiosity, did three hundred sixes come standard? At all with three leg spoilers? I don't know. I don't know where they came from. They I just appeared and they were brilliant. Don't know either. Because like then um, you got the ones with the brake lights, and then you got the ones mine didn't have a brake light. Mine did one. have a brake light. Mine's a skinny one. Mine did, but it kept breaking. Like the brake light kept breaking. <laughs> the brake light wires kept breaking. Uh, that's just typical French wiring. So yeah. how long then did you continue to drive yours on for? Of a long time. You had yours even when everybody else was starting to kind of upgrade. You were yeah, still holding I was the still fort. 16, 17. You were still holding the fort. Yeah. I can, I'm just talking about, we'll go back, can I tell you? I'll go back to that story in a minute, but I'm just talking about when I was on here because I don't know how long or longer my signal's going to last, but. Fair enough. I found a few other like heavily modded ones since we're talking about modding. Do you remember a fella, when me and you were uh, a French car show that time, there was this like estate, I think it was like plastic up dread. Just, just Justin McPherson. McPherson. Yes. Yeah, he's what I aspire to be still. He, he, well, <laughs> he still has a couple. <laughs> so, yeah, he does. So he's a sedan there at the minute. Phase, and he's, he's, it was a phase two, but he put a phase one front on it. I believe he's a, so. He's mad and he's a wizard. On it. Yeah. He's a wizard. So I was just chatting about what he's done. He's got a forged bottom end. Yeah. A 2.2 Merc diesel pump. Didn't know it. And uh, he's got an ARP strip, and I said, strip pipe. And I said, what about the likes of... He says, he's keeping factory top mount for now. And I was like, why would you not run a front mount? He says, he thinks the factory top mount isn't what's holding the car back. But he said, definitely heat soak after a few hard runs. But he's talking about tracking. Yeah. So he's like, oh, going on a track day. 
But he says then he's building another phase one estate and he's looking at the idea of going out for a bigger turbo wet. Do you remember you remember? I him? remember he chatting to him and then I came home and followed him or added him as a friend, Facebook yeah, and all, and I he remember, accepted me. Yeah. And then he started vlogging yeah. builds. Yes. And I was hooked. But this was only a couple of years ago. This was maybe during lockdown he was building these. And then do you know Steve Stephen Robertson? No. He's from Scotland, right? Has a chain of blue. No, what's a what's a phase? Sigma. Don't think she's she maybe Sigma. One. No, she's a. F- I'm assuming she's a phase two, done phase three. Oh, God knows. But she's the she's a dark blue. He his specs insane. So I was like, he, like he sent videos. You want to see that thing fucking go? But he's a big like this. Is what I'm saying about boys from the other side of the water loving the felt spec. He's a big felt spec sticker. Yeah. Across the back window, we here's done this. So two liter HDA rods, sixteen valve yeah. rods. ARP head bolts, thick steel, like multi layer steel head gasket. Yeah. So thicker head. Uh, he made his own Sidewinder turbo. So when you see it, literally, the turbo, like, literally sitting on top of the gearbox, that's what yeah. I was talking about. He has it. He has a HX30, holds it. It's not far off the size of what I used to run. Um, right. Off a Cummins 6BT engine with a. He has an external wastegate. So he has an, so on a diesel and a 306 has a like the screamer pipe coming out of the bonnet. That has to be unreal. That is class. I'll show you the videos after. Like um, it's unbelievable. He has modified the pump. Uh, he's running a 2.75 inch line downpipe, which is pretty big for one end. That is There's big. N- not much space. Like uh, Zandi Inlet and a Megane 225 RS front mount intercooler. It's fucking nuts. What is that good for? You do I, a bar on it. He didn't, <laughs> I didn't actually ask him. Um, I don't know what it has, but he, he sent me some videos of it. Fuck that thing can shift. Sounds class as well. Real Would it deep. be 250? Probably not a kick in the arse off it, to be honest, really. I think your man... I think your man darn job. We're talking about the same fella. I, I think, think it he is. was 260. Aye, it was, it he was, was like 260 break or something. And like was that, that standard s- block? Uh, I was think I. so, why? So the block is seriously over-engineered then, technically. I will, it would have, there it is the, if you look after it. Yeah, but I don't think nobody ever changed the pistons, just the, just the rods as far as I'm yeah. aware. Like, I think the pistons were all the same. Like, just fucking nuts. Because like. I know, obviously, they do it for the style, but the real big power boras and gulfs, they all talk about they have the smoke because they don't want to melt the piston, or melt the piston. I will keep them cool. Smoke aye. keeps them cool. I if you if you start rolling too lean, that's what melts melts pistons. Like it's the same as my car. If you don't get enough fuel into them, you, you well then basically you have too much air. She gets too hot, and the next thing your piston melts, and that's not good, crack. So um, you probably had out me trying to get back in the corner then before, and I'll just do I know all, but um, so Connor, how long did you actually drive on an A4 then? Five, six years. You had her for a long time. You I had did. her even after, like all the rest of us, at all kind of. I was getting older, but mentally staying one age. I couldn't let it go. I see. I didn't get into it. Were you jumping into it and just getting a smile out your face every time? Ninety-nine mm, percent of the time, yeah. Because that's one reason I won't sell my own car. <laughs> I I got under the D Turbo game later as well. Like I think I was twenty-one whenever I had mine, and like I was like, "Oh, these are a seventeen, eighteen-year-old car." And now I look back. Like age thirty now, I look back and go, "The fuck was I thinking that I was too old for one of them back yeah. then?" Like, but like we had, like we had so much fun, like in those cars, like back it was just then. crack twenty four seven. No matter where you went, you you made, fun, you know, you made the amusement, whatever it was. But it's like, like it used to be like I remember even like back at the Elk and stuff back in the day, like the three hundred sixes weren't going to be the fastest cars there, but it was like. Just Everybody seen, loved watching them yes. race because it was just smoke, noise. <laughs> you just all you heard was that, like you know, and like yeah, you went against someone on map one thirty, Bora. You're probably getting eaten alive, but like you'd done it because you could. You'd done it because you could, and like re- like, but it was even more like three or six people going against three or six people, and then the it was HDA, like a wee cult. Yeah, and then like the HDA boys came out to play, and it was like, well, you are all twats because you have a HDA, like well, well HDA's. So phase two and phase three only. Phase three, phase only. three. Phase three so only. The HDA is a common rail. That's what the, that's what the H. So obviously, high pressure. Um, they have to be mapped then. Yes, they could be mapped. So they standard wear 
One ten. Aye, one ten. One ten mm. and ninety. Aye. With a map. Oh, well, it depends. One thirty, one forty. Mm, McGuire's and Alistair Cooks were both pushing one fifty, one sixty. So would if you had a real good going D Turbo, she would technically stay with HDI that was mapped then, or were they eating the light? <sighs> Depended on driver then, I think. I don't know. I'd say a mapped HDI probably would have had it because it'd been far more efficient. But the HDI driver wouldn't have the same smile on their face. Hundred oh, no, percent. Yeah, no, I know like, that. You know, it used to be, you know, like, you got them mapped, put the front mount and all on them too, and done a wee bit of work there, but it just, just wouldn't have been the same, like. You didn't come out with grease in your hands. True, like, true. Like, and there's more to go wrong with the HDA. Like, the... the, the, the ex- Fast amount of electrics. Yes, on which we all know French electrics aren't exactly fantastic well, to begin with. Brilliant. Like, there's, like, the, you know, the D-Turbo, there's, like, they're an indirect... Ignition or sorry, indirect injection engine. So there's far less to go wrong. You don't have to worry about a high pressure fuel pump or anything crack like that, you know. But I suppose if you think about it, if there was no D turbo, there would be no felt spec. No, there wouldn't. Aye. Because they are, if you were obviously the image back in the day, was well, black D turbo. I mind whenever I was in high school, first, second year, following a 306 up out of Duperstown and it was full, it was just following the road full of reek. Uh, and Dad gave off at it. And I was like, that's dead, let's go with me someday. I like yeah, he used to see as well. Like I remember my cousin, like this was whenever I was like eleven or twelve and like my cousin, she'd be seven years older than me. And like all the ones in Claddy at the time all either had three O sixes or one O sixes mm-hmm. or Saxos, ZXs or Zaras. And like it used to be like you'd pull by in Claddy and they'd all be parked up and this back some of them still had neons and stuff like that back in the day, like and like they were all just decked. Like Kingfisher Green three O six, laser green Zara black Zara and a couple of saxos and stuff like and you're just looking and going like I just remember seeing them all lying licking the tower like and I was like that is class like, I just thought this was unreal if you were to buy one today um no well actually sorry if you I, if you were to buy one today would you go I'll not say the third car because you could talk about that as well but a Zara or a 306 D tub a west coast or a, detail, or a 306? Probably a 306 still. I'd take the C out of them all. I would prefer a 405. Aye, but that's not the question, Michael. I know you'd prefer a 405. <sighs> Black Zara is a base. Decked West Coast kit. Full tons. Well then, there's one other question I'd like to ask. <laughs> it's, it's but I love Zara's. They are beautiful. Like. Oh, they're out class. Of curiosity, they, they, are, they should have been back with Dave. Yes, with... Uh, that's right. funny, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Same with the Calibra. Yes. Yes. And uh, Toyota Sleekas. Yeah. 100% should have been rear wheel drive as well. Think about the fun that we could be now talking about if they had been rear wheel drive. I don't think we would be here talking about it. No, we'd just be a dinner. Fair enough. Fair enough. What would you class the tiers of D turbos then? I would put it phase one, phase two, and that's it. So you what? Well, like I suppose what Connor's asking is like you've got ZX Vulcans, you've got Zantes, you've got all them. Like you know, what would you say is the bottom of the food chain? Like what would you look at and go? I know it's a D Turbo, but it's still ugh, don't like it. But then none. you've got none. They're you'd all, all put them in level playing field then. I would. I th- <sighs> they're all the one. They just changed the body. They're all like the Zante is quite quirky because it had hydraulic suspension and, and everybody worked. used to drive on it decked. And then there's worked. a lot of shit. Brakes then or something? No, to do with. you burst the two spheres. There's a diaphragm, yeah. and you burst the spheres, so she went lower, and they controlled part of your brakes. Yeah, That's, yeah. That's Who needs brakes? They just <laughs> slow you down. Sure, if you're going low enough, you'll be driving slow anyway. True. And the ZX Volcans again, something I never appreciated when I was younger. But like me personally, I'd have a Minstone blue one. But they, they rot. Yeah, they, they rot. rot they rot badly. And then it's not like ninety percent of the body works fiberglass. Oh, and the other ten percent's not Rust. there because it rotted. <laughs> uh, some I think a lot of them is fiberglass. There's a lot of fiberglass in them. Or maybe there was a lot of fiberglass added to them whenever they were getting repaired. Can't comment because I'm not sure. But like, I didn't appreciate them at all until I remember seeing a picture one day of a black one with a set of like a half like half moon half set moon, of CVs yeah. on a set of fawn mills. Yeah, and I was like, that's. That's fucking god tier. That's the that guy that still class. never goes up last claim. <laughs> 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 Gotta make do. <laughs> and then, you know, like, as I say, then there was obviously like, the, the 306s, the Zara's, you know, the, all the likes of them. Some Peugeot partners and Berlingos come with the, the D turbo engine too, yeah. didn't they? Yeah. 
They yeah. were pretty cool too. They were cool as well. Well, if you were to do a 306 up now, so everybody said what I would have, Zara, Black Zara, but like, that'll change next week when okay. I decide that... You don't like black anymore? Yeah, well, ultimately I'd have a 405 D-Turbo buried on a set of Escort Cosworths, but don't no one wants to talk about that, so I'm shoehorning it in anyway. But if you were to... So, so you were to... Someone will say, right, you have to pack D-Turbo engine car. What are you going for? What are you doing to it? A bottle green phase one. <laughs> Sorry, what? A bottle green. I know I heard you, but yeah, <laughs> you have to see it to appreciate it. I think what I, color is bottle green? Like the shit is color of fast bottle green, like right? That, like that dark. That's a gloss color. It's like it was like uh, basically. It must have been wild rare because I've only ever seen one, and I hounded and hounded and hounded seen, to I've buy seen it. A few of them, like, nope. but a lot of them were five door. Yeah, and this like, one was three door, and it was a phase one. Right? Yeah, I didn't think it was a thing either. A lot of them were like five door phase twos. Twos, street yeah. diesels. Yes. With a pinstripe. Blue, like a bluey tealy pinstripe? No, a white pinstripe up the side of it. Just oh God. I don't know why that came on it. But Most I of them running about with steely dands on them. Like you used yeah. to see them park beside hedges and then the hedges would grow over them and you sort of wouldn't see them anymore because they were the same colour as a hedge. Bottle green, phase one, three door. Okay. Buried. Don't think I'll put a sea legged on it. Oh no, you need a, you need a Not now. To see, to be fair, I've seen Port, Port Car scene ended up their TikTok or their Instagram really uh-huh. of the Black D Turbo in the port there recently <sighs> enough. The convoy of them? Uh, no, no, he's talking about that one black one. What's it? Whose is it? I can't mind the number. Uh, I can't mind the reg either, but. She's phase one black yes. on Volcanes. And John knows something. Just a D turbo spotter. I was like, that sort of does it for Aye. me. Now. The three leg like, nearly. I have one under no, my bed. I'd rather have a three, like, three leg. If, I, if you'd put a three leg on it, it would work. It would. But would add a wee bit of tagginess to it. it well, it takes you back to the early 90s. Late but 90s, maybe more. Aye. Uh, it's like there's, there's definitely a difference between the early 90s and the late 90s mm. day. Like, like uh, ah, fuck, I just love them. Like, well, so, like, what, what, what wheels did you put on it? 17 inch styles. Yeah, they're a god tier wheel. Like, blue mud flaps with a Pugil man on it, the Pugil badge. So bottle green phase one, three door, on a set of seventeen inch delts with GTA skirts. Is that what them skirts are? Just GTA skirts? No, there was there was differences in them. The GTA skirts, the bottom half stayed black and the top half was painted. Mine were full painted. Uh, oh, they were GTAs. Yours GTAs. No, the new were HTAs. Yeah, mine were HTAs. That, that was the difference. That was the only difference. Was that all the only difference yeah. was on them? Um, probably just the usual full tents. Stupid sticker in the front window. So I'm stupid in the back window. Given. Piped. Yes. Screwed a wee bit. Too much. Oh, I think whenever you're saying, like, what would you do? Obviously, you'd, try, you'd want to go the most ideal. See burial in, in the roof? No. Nah. Or would you take it off now? Two. <laughs> <laughs> Adam Cooper spec. I don't. Can Hitch spec. Oh, I don't mind too. Had you two of them as yeah. well? I remember Can Hitch has way A4. And he, he was the first boy to have a rev limiter on a diesel. Like, he had it before anybody had one. And um, it wasn't like a hard cut or nothing, it was just a limiter. Mm. But I can remember, we used to call him the fisherman. I think I told him this, and if he doesn't know this... No, he does. No, he does, because no, he, he listens. Um, but we used to call him the fisherman, because he had the two like things up at the side. We just thought, this man's coming in fishing. <laughs> and then I remember saying to him, I was supposed to crack with the two CBs. And he was like, oh, like we have a contract and firm and like you know i can hear all the drivers now i can get a radius of like 20 mile and i was like okay now i feel like a bit of a dick i think he just spun you that one though uh, very possibly it is cooper like so yeah but he, no i remember no i wouldn't have a cb area on there i would unless it's like, like uh them and twin cams sierra is a wee bit but them and twin cams, I don't know what it is about them, but they, they just they, need it. They really it's do. Like we must in peace. Yeah, hundred percent. Like, if again, if you're not from here or like the north or even the south, you probably be like, the fuck would you do that for? What's, but what's a CB reel? You know, it, it works. it's just part of the culture. Like, it's like it is, yeah. It's just literally, it just makes sense. But much as I hate them, like they just. Which is like the young ones now. I seen a Bora and Marhara. What one was that now? Black one with Toledo wheels. Like the old ship Toledo's. Oh? Yes, I know what you mean, yeah. It, it, I seen it lying out at the oh, recreation centre. the exact one you're on about, yes. Slammed and he's got a CB aerial. But they can screw them into their actual aerial aerial. So that's yes. cheating. 
Yeah, you need the magnetic mount if yeah. you're going to do it right. Like, a wee bit of cloth underneath it just in case. Yeah, 100%. No, if I got a CB area on there, I'd go for a wee. It's called a wee willy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not joking. It's called a wee willy. They're a stubby CB area. Yeah. They're like, don't height. So accurate. Are we still talking about the CB area? <laughs> do you know something, right? It's just going in my head there. Um, obviously, we always talk about the car that started at Feltzweig was 306s. Mm-hmm. But I'd love to know when everybody started to talk about Feltzweig. Uh, when did that come about? Because it's alright talking about it, but, like, I, Because it's fucking world-renowned now, essentially. It and did it get fired into the Urban Dictionary one night, taking the hand, and everybody yeah. just adapted it? Yeah, because there's literally, there's a picture, I think, I, I talk about this, and, like, literally our opening section of, like, episode two, and it's literally, you go on, it says that, Define spells back, and it's like it's the art of like a certain way of modifying a car. If you go on, if you type Mara Felt into Wikipedia, there's literally a fact felt back golf in the picture. Was and it? it's literally straight, it's a, it's a jazz blue Mark IV driving down Broad Street. That's cool as fuck. Uh, correct. That is cool as fuck. Because probably Mara Felt, <laughs> as bad as it sounds, is probably better known. Oh, I sure remember. By Mara Felt's only known because of the sexes. When we were in, when we were in, uh, and going back to my trip advisor, it is probably one of the best Lappentowns. Lappentowns. One hundred percent. When me and Connor Kelly were in uh, French car show that so time, so you and him, yeah. <laughs> but there's two Connors here. Like, um, when we were in French car show that time. I remember we get chatting ten hour lad with two o seven, and I remember like speaking to him for a bit, and I was like, he's like, oh yeah, like those guys all going low, like that felt spec style from over the yeah. way and we were like, you know about that? And That's like, the guy who bought the splitter off. Aye. Yeah. Yes. And do you remember also, this come on in my head there now, do you remember the ZX that was there? It was like a black ZX that had like bright orange bandit steels. Five door? No. I remember us looking at this at the time. It was like, we looked at the engine and it was so far advanced. Oh, yes. And we were like, oh, what'd it do? 265 horsepower. What? Yeah. Why looking? Black with like bright orange steel wheels. We didn't care because you never seen them long enough. And they were <laughs> they were like they were semi slicks, I think. On it as yeah, well. that's right. Because I was, I remember looking at them like it's a waste of good tires there. Yeah, and but threw some Nankings on. This thing was. I remember we were looking and we were like, oh, okay, no, this thing's a lot of work done. And we didn't. I wouldn't have been technically strong enough back then to understand. Neither would I. He not, was telling us not the half of it. What? But, but like I remember that. Like it was. Fuck! It was cool. It's funny too. Like if you think about it, so. Pujo and Saturn really had some going there with the 306, the Zara, the 405. Yeah. All these. 46. 406. 406. 2.1 though. Yeah. Like, they don't have 1.92. Nope. They're all no, right. I don't think so. Timeless looking nice cars. Definitely, obviously, the Zara and the 306. After that. Yeah. Like they the, must have changed designer. The Phase 2 Zara never, ever looked as nice as the Phase 1 Zara. Only done as the rally car. Yes, correct. That was the only time Too right. modern looking and didn't survive the test of time. No. The early 406s definitely were nicer looking. And but the 405s are far nicer looking car. Um, another wee thing to add, 306s may as well have been the start of eyelids on your headlights. When you actually think about a 306 transition from a 306 to a 307, it's actually quite... Depressing? Yeah, it's quite disgusting. But, but like, I like... 306s were low slung and quite kind of sporty big long arches and 307s are a, are a big fucking bubble like it's sort of like it would be I suppose the equivalent of going from Mark 3 to Mark 5 except Golf. Mark 5s look good 307s aren't but that's what I mean like a Mark 5 you put up beside a Mark 3 it's a massive bubble I've seen about two good looking 307s in my entire life like, one of them was a bolt. one of them was in Hungary and he had it done on air is that the one we seen? Mm. No, that was Germany, where they had to put it back to standard and they got home, basically. No, that was a two... That was a two... That was a two six state. Yeah. That's oh. right. It was, it was a three... It was three or seven. And it was cool. And there was one fellow over here that has decked on a set of vortexes, and that was kind of cool looking. Mm. I have twin pipes and all. I'd say if I looked at it now, I'd probably go, hmm. But at the time, I thought it was cool. He, but he's took mummy's car for too long. Ah. But there, sort of thing. But there's something I was thinking about. Or I've thought about it for a while. I suppose it nearly could be its own topic. Like, again, them, like, Mark IV Golf, 306s, Boras, Zaras, all that, everything like that. The boxy cars 
are all timeless. Like I'd have a Mark IV Golf over my own but car. Like, or in, or in, in the early two thousands, we'd have been looking at the likes of Sierras and Orions and Mark Threes and Mark Twos and going, oh, "Fuck, like they're wild looking." Now, I think with the fact that you look at the electric cars and they're trying to be too futuristic, you know, you kind of look at like what you used to have and go, "Oh no, that's just cooler." I didn't appreciate that at the time. Aye, uh, it's like, like the same as like you look at tractors from the eighties and nineties, or like look at Fiat one ten nineties, like cases, the masses, John Deere's. Everything well, John Deere's were a wee bit trying to be a wee bit. They, out, they were out there with the big eight, the high visibility cab. Well, but in general, thumb everything was pretty boxy. You just put a pile of squares together and it worked more or less. I like the ten series cab. The essential structure of it is still in the M series. It's just yeah. they've decided to make it look like an R. But you like look at a Massey like from the nineties, like look at a three ninety T or like a three oh nine five or even a sixty one. I'd have took the three thousand series Massey any day of the week over a three hundred over like a three ninety T. So like a thirty one twenty five. Oh, the I don't start, like them. the start of the like the corner post windows. They were, they, like were cool. they were cool. Looking. They were cool. They were futuristic. I would the take a sixty one eighty or sixty one ninety. Because the um, if you look at a, but say also a three ninety eight or a three ninety nine, there, you know, the back mud guards, whatever you want to call them, side cap, are so small that any size of wheel, if you go wide at all, it kind of looks a bit stupid. Mm. You know, you know, like if you look at Grassman's um, thirty six fifty five, isn't it they have or something? Yeah, something like that. Um, like they made the rear wider. Yeah. And on the big tires, it looks right. Yeah. yeah. If they'd have put that, you know, you could put wider mud guards in the front to suit the wide wheels. Yeah, so what boys do with the TMs, they put TM 190 mud guards on. To I'm sure it's even with fates. You got the extensions. That's right, down the front. Mm-hmm. Aye, that dead but even, even across, was there not an extension across the top of them too? Aye, I have that in mine. Yeah. If you took that off, yours is going to look so oh, out of proportion. Why looking? I'm probably going to take it off and there'd be a heap of rust. And it's like, oh no, put that back on. That was holding the cab on, sorry. <laughs> Turns out the whole cab just falls off. Because uh, uh, if you look at a modern day Peugeot, was a 308 or something is the modern day one? They've started looking nicer, they're too something. futuristic. Like I, 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 don't get me wrong, I've seen... Basically, the 306 equivalent today can't mean the model of it, and it's not bad looking. I'll tell you what, but the, I wouldn't say in 20 years' time, be like, that's oh, fucking I'll deadly. I'll tell you where it's all went wrong. They put up an ad for like the 40th anniversary of the 205 GTA, and they were like introducing the new GTA. And it was this 205 out doing like handbrake turns, and like, did not you see this? Being a real wee hoon. Aye, yeah. and then the next thing, the 208 just drives in through um, and on route d- to bingo where doesn't, it doesn't do anything, and everybody's really like. Born. You've just made it. You've just proved your point that new cars are shit. Yeah, it just got born. But I'm going to give a couple of honourable mentions here because we still need to bounce on. So, a couple, and I want to say thanks to Hugh Barr for providing me with knowledge because I'll be honest, I don't have don't have a clue anyway. But I would have eaten less of a clue if you hadn't given me a bit of hand. Uh, Ryan McMullen, Gary Kerrigan also wrote to me last night. He wanted to talk about felt spec. I think when we do the felt spec revisit it podcast, we'll bring him on because he was. He's a wee bit older than us again. He's still stuck in his childhood. Aye. Uh, oh, same as, same as the rest of us. But Gary, Gary's good crack, like, so... But it's it's now come round that, like... You know, if you were to now buy a 306 and leave it in the shed over two years, say, and build it and have it, like, pure mint, mm-hmm. if that came out, that's fucking class. I'd you could drive it at whatever age I'd you want. I'd love to have a 306 parked down there. There used, like, used to be a guy, whenever we were, whenever we were what... Which twenty before twenty, it's uh, good to uh, there used to be a fella sitting in a stone mint. So six, I can't remember what white colour one. it was. Aye, white. At the port. And he had two wings with him. Yes. And he was in mid late white thirties. White yeah, every time you seen him he was eating ice cream. But that, that but, thing uh, but caught the, everybody's attention uh, just because how was, clean it, it was. It wasn't decked or nothing, like no. No, just bog that. standard. I remember that. Um Cause if you see a stone mint three oh six now, it would Grab everybody's attention. Yeah, one hundred percent. They they turn heads. They they've always turned heads. You're they driving. Got a, they got a real bad reputation with the police too. So anybody that has one buried now and takes it out as a hero. Even I felt like even when we were at that stage, because I can remember in Kenry one night. Um, I remember like sitting parked up, and the police then I was sitting in. Well, I think it might have been Sean O'Kane or something at the time. Yeah, we I remember were parked this. Parked across the road. No, well, you weren't there that night. No, when were you telling me? We were literally parked across the road from. My car and the police pulled up and sat beside my three. You six. sure that uh, the two of them were not beside each other? No, definitely, no, not definitely that night. not. Oh, a different this night was then. this was oh this was like closer <coughs> to the winter time, and I remember like it was parked up in Killery and like at the other side of the road. And I was sitting in with Sean, and the police like pulled up and sat beside my car, 
and sat beside my car and kept sitting there and they were there for about half an hour and then when they realised like nobody was there they, they drove off now they didn't get out and go to Mullins for an ice cream or anything like that and it just seems kind of like given it was in the Diamond and Kilray and there was like other places that they could have parked in but they went and parked beside the 306 yeah. they just gather police attention like do you remember the night they came into Marafelt with a ramp what's the MOT ramp I remember hearing about that was one of the nights actually better yet that was one of the nights that killed Marafelt yeah that was that, one was. Of, that was 2015 I remember that. I wasn't there for it, thankfully, but everybody in the back car park had done. I was there. I was oh. in the back car park, but oh. I wasn't in my car. Oh. But I got a letter in the windscreen. What? Saying what? Yeah. I can't remember what it said now, but it was from the police. Come to the nearest MOT station or something, whatever it was, blah, blah, book in or whatever. I can't right remember. But I was not. I let the car lie. I maybe let it lie for three or four days. I think I was the only one that night. Well, like. I remember that because technically it was oh if the MOT ramp comes in you just leave your car there and get left I, I, remember it. I was ready in with somebody else I, I, think I was sealing about with somebody like, else you just and I was just like you know what well, was it not thing a thing like. where if it ha- whenever it happened the second time people just parked up jumped out and got left home yeah, yeah. got left home that happened to us because they can't do you if you're not there that no. happened to us one night we were all at the at the Elk and we all this is 2014 and we all drove down you were there is that um, the night they cordoned it off? Yes. Bl- literally roadblocked yes. near the end. Roadblocked it. And I mm-hmm. mean, it was the only time I've ever seen everybody in BCP parked in the proper spaces. Yeah. Or, you like, come into Marfelt then and there was not a space between the two car the parks. The whole car park was full and everybody was just like, right, let's get out. And the whole thing, that's, I remember that's clear as day. The whole yep. thing was standing. Yeah. And, but that, uh, that night, that was funny that night down at the Elk. Was that that same night? Yeah. No, I don't know if it was that same night, but I got away that night. Well, I had a 1.4207 hydraulics. They weren't really going to do a wild pile to me until I did get done. But now that's a different story. But like at that time, I was driving about in the fucking standard wheels. Like it was, I was in no trouble. Like, but no. even at that, because the police had blocked off the the car park, I was like, "Ooh, I'm a bad boy. Like, look, I'm in trouble. Like, the police have blocked off the car park and all. I'm going to have to stand outside." Realistically, they wouldn't have. They couldn't have done me for fuck all, even if. Go stand protest. <laughs> like, like they couldn't have done me for nothing. Like anyway, like but maybe maybe tires at the height of it. But even at that, probably not. Oh, those were the days. We'll finish off and well, first of all, finish off my mentions, and then we'll finish off the other story. Uh, yes, also more honourable mentions to Steve Robertson, who has the mental three hundred six, the blue one, Justin McPherson who also is the metal one. Uh, Alistair Cook and then Gary Nickel, who I referred to earlier, just because he took me out running. His laser greens are, and I was all happy about it. It is a class looking car, this, is, this, this sums up the turbo owner and ownership in a nutshell, this story here. It involves you. And it was, uh, it was a night I was down, it was one night at the Elk, and I, I was in the, in the 207, and we were all waiting to get out. <laughs> I think I know where this goes. We were all waiting to we were all waiting to get out onto the line, and I was parked behind you, and I was doing like a turn. It was just where everybody turned. Just it's that just where first everybody junction. turned. So I was mid turn. Now, correct me if I'm not, but you had an upswept tip. Uh, upswept tip in your three o six. Yeah, it was off on E thirty six and three. It was yeah, a scorpion tip. We cut it off. A yeah. scorpion back box to put it on. And then there's these kids with like the. Remember they were standing going, oh, that's the car with the hydraulics. Like, oh, bounce it. So I used to be able to do this thing where I used to be able to make the car bounce at the back. And no sooner had I done that, the next thing all I heard was, zhim, zhim, zhim. <laughs> that's big rev. And this big plume of smoke came straight through my driver's window. <laughs> I couldn't have landed up better. I- literally, I was more or less staring like, at Connor's, like the top of his exhaust. Literally, I was about to say staring at Connor's tip. But... <laughs> <laughs> that happened as well. <laughs> that's, a, that's a story for another time off camera. You took his wobble. <laughs> now he has to stare at your tip. And uh, I just, I was literally, I couldn't have worked any better. It's just a big plume of black smoke straight up through the window of my car and er, filled me. I think it was me, Marty, and maybe Anthony. Um, or maybe it was you. No, I'll tell you, it was a fortnight after that, I think, was there was something on an ant room. Was it like the Paul Walker? Paul Walker. And you were in the back of another car and I showed it over to you. And then if I can mind right, it was shortly after that, then you came to the wake. And I was like, fair fucks to you, lad. 
No, I had bumped into you between that. Aye, long yeah. before that, oh, aye. No, between that. No, it was, you barely knew me at the time. Aye. But you I used, literally to, only you known used you. to drive by us when we were parked up in Marfelt, and you'd, uh, like, you'd just stop and you'd like stare at one of us, and then you'd just do a burnout and drive <laughs> <laughs> And you had the boost freak sunstrip as well. <laughs> I didn't know how to make friends. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like, it was like, just like glares, and then just. Could smoke everywhere and it's like just or just like you and then I remember like one other night it was like we were sitting and you seen some other three was like and we were just watching this and then you did like a mild rollback and it just took off and I was like why'd you do that and you're like there's another three of six <laughs> we not there and I pushed them round there was Joe McStravick came up into Marafelt and he came into the back car park and he went really 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 slow and I put my front bumper to the back of his car and I dozed him around that car park to get him go out the road no. Yeah, that was talked about for a long time. Is that why your fog light, the front driver's fog light, was a bit wonky on it? It might have been an eye. Cause I can and then Curtis Ferguson put an end to it. Why? Me and him raced up the Glen Shane, and he, went in the, he overtook me in the Chevrons, and just fired every stone in the oh. Chevrons up right in front of my car, and I lost the two lenses then, I was like, I'm not even going back to look for them. Screw that. Let's chat in the Curtis. Because that's no, one thing about mate, phase one bumpers. Effect. Whenever they're meant... With the two fog lights sitting nicely. Oh, they oh. are meant oh. Don't put LEDs near them. Just keep the old orange bulbs. Jo- I, uh, do you agree with that? Uh, yeah, keep it on its area. Yep. I agree with that. But the funny that conversation there, because we still have to get on with the rest of the ball. That's right, I. So, versus challenge. <laughs> May Fuck. As well. We've probably, actually. There's still questions to do. I know, but we'll do the versus challenge first. All right, fair enough. Connor, we'll ask you for this. Uh, same oh, as you're here. Enough. 17 inch stealth or lions? Stealth? Oh, really? Yeah. <sighs> Do you know what, actually? I, I think it's because I haven't owned them. Yeah. I, I think if I've seen it now, I, I said lions are cool. Oh, they're class. They're like, jeez, but they're class. But they're not for everything. Stealth's just throw it in anything. You, could you can throw it in your trailer. <laughs> seen you can throw actually. it. Literally, I've I've seen. Anything. I've I think yeah, because stealth suit old cur- like there's a there's a Karina floats about Donegal white Karina sixteen hundred yeah. E floats about Donegal every year the rally on a set of stealths and it's fucking class. You can put them on a partner van. You can. Put I've them seen BMWs in stealths. Yeah, well, they're maybe not stealths, but they're not far off. It's BMW's version of it, was it not? I think they're stealths. Five by one twenty. Oh, maybe then. And what else? Uh, like, but you've seen like courses, Astros, all them, all stuff. Ah, fuck. I Cavaliers, know. the whole thing. Yes, yes, deadly Cavaliers. That's another one we'll probably end up a, covering at some point. I seen a Hyundai. Don't know what it was. Only seen the badge in Boucher Road this evening. It was green. Your jumper green. Red, yes. On stealth. And I was like, is that an old Astra? But it wasn't. Must be an Elantra or something like that. I have no idea. It looked cool as fuck. I think the old It Elantra. had a fan blade too. It had stealth, a stealth in the front and a fan blade in the back. And I was like... Four, it would be 4 no. by 100 uh, It was a Hyundai. Could be an Elaxon or something like that. I have no idea, but it looked, it looked cool. It, it took... Until I walked past and was going walking back up and looked at the back, I was like, that's not an Astra. That's not a Vauxhall, what? And then... Is it an Elantra or something like that? I don't know. It just goes to show stealth, so don't I? I have an idea. You'll either uh, answer it very quickly or you'll have to think about it, as usual. Um, right. So, pretend you come... You, uh, so, basically, imagine you're offered two cars, you have to pick one. Your ID 306 you described there, bought a green... Phase one, all that crack. Mm-hmm. Or somebody has taken NNA and refurbed her. Fuck, they'd be doing well to take NNA back. <laughs> <laughs> you want to right? have to take NNA just because of the hardship he went through? <laughs> <laughs> you, would, you would go for NNA, yeah. you would take her back again. Yeah. Fair enough. No, I thought, I thought, because realistically, you said your ideal one. Would you take your own one back or would you go for Everybody the Everybody knew one? me. Yeah. No, nobody knew me. Everybody knew that car Aye. and I was just the face behind it. That's like most. That's that's most car people. Yeah. You're known, but nowadays you're known by like your Instagram name or what you drive. Aye. Uh, it's like it's like oh here you make us go. Uh, Red Sierra. Oh aye. Uh, the Saab engine. Aye. Uh, I know you. Yeah, I know you. It's like all right, man. Well, this. He's blowing his own smoke up his ass. No, I'm not just saying like no. It's literally like 
people don't. I know, I know, I know, we know, we know. People we don't associate faces with names no. anymore. No, it's faces with number plates. Faces with number plates and faces with faces with cars. Like, was it not like back, back in the day anyway that you would have been like you knew ev you knew the owner say of say a three was like come on you knew the number plate. You knew who exactly who owned it. Yeah, through the but years. you didn't know them. <laughs> you didn't know them yourself. You probably couldn't even see it, what their faces were. Like, it was the like uh, GGY, the twin cam. Yeah, I remember Stephen Dilley. Blue. Yes. Yeah. But like, I remember him coming on to Mar Felt and I was like, oh, there's GGY. Fuck, there's GGY. Like, and I was like, I didn't know who Stephen Dilley was. I just knew, fuck me, boys, there's GGY. Like, I was like, that's class. He goes through two engines a week and doesn't care. <sighs> she, she not fully restored there recently. I think it is, I. Uh, that's Stone a fucking Mantu. class car 84 blue look. And took nothing but abuse It's whole life class. Way to drive them though 100% and Out of curiosity See uh, if For Fuel economy wise Did the uh, Tank of diesel Do long oh, Once you screwed Sunday them Sunday night No During the week Yeah Would she got 50 miles of the gallon With normal driving Probably Yours might not Because you're no. so smoky Mine's I don't know I'll tell you what that Mine didn't read what speed I was doing Or nothing so I None of them do None of them say I No do, But mine done one better And coming out of my felt One evening Just started to wind the clock back itself I was like What's going on here So she started If I left my felt With 151,000 on her By the time I got to Superstown There was 142,000 I was like <laughs> What? So I just let it run all I thought this is brilliant <laughs> to, to be fair actually And every time you reversed <laughs> It went up my head again to be fair, they're one of the only car you never bought in the miles on them. You no. just bought, you just bought it. That's the way. That's the you way. Like even the Lexuses are going now. Like and like twenty, you just you're not advertising. You know the miles. It's no. just I think you, you I, buy it. I think FGGA had like 158 k on it, and like it was never questioned. But that's because they never had, they never had the standard engine. I think I got mine 130 something. I don't know what was. Well, mine wasn't the original engine, but I think. Do you no, it wasn't. It wasn't. Mine wasn't in the no. original engine. Do you think if it ever gets to the stage, well, it probably is at the stage now where if somebody does fully refurb it and leave it probably fully on their sales and all that carry on all the day, where, you know, will they start to fetch 7, 8, 9, 10? They're thousand? fetching north of 5 anyway at the minute. Like yeah, a real trying it. There's boys putting them up for 4.5 and, and I sit and look at it and go, it used to be like someone said 4.5, I go, is that man on fucking methamphetamine? Now I see... Four and a half, and go. Am I a methamphetamine? Did I consider <laughs> buying that? Yeah. Well, not really, not that I have. Like buying it with the invisible money that I don't have. But I'm looking at it, going, not a. That's not, not that dear. That's not a bad buy. <laughs> you know, looking at it going, you're you're justifying it to yourself now. Yeah. Whereas, I think it does, but I think it's because we're older and we miss. Hundred we percent. The There's nostalgia there. Like, look, I jump into a jeep now and jump out with <laughs> not a sore back. Where's the fun in that, Connor? Like, no, there's none. I bet mean, you were so used to the or not watching the way back every time you drove by a police car, seeing if they were going to flick on the indicators and turn around after you again. Seeing what back roads you could dart down to get away from them. Oh, fuck, I couldn't take mine over back roads. You only thought that. Ah oh, no, I I dented the sump in mine. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yours is an aluminium sump too. No steel. But yours is aircon. No, it didn't. Doesn't it? No. That was Owen then. Yes. Aye. Because it's HDA. Yeah. Yeah. No, mine did not have aircon. <laughs> no. To be fair, not. there was some amount of, of Laguna splitters put on them over the days. There was a Laguna splitter in everything but a Laguna. No, nah. <laughs> <laughs> every Laguna in the country no longer had a splitter because it was on the Cavalier beside it. <laughs> I've seen a guy on TikTok started mass producing them again. Oh, well, fair. You know what? He's like, going to make a kill. Oh, to be fair, 100%. even Cooper splitters. You know, yeah. like. Ah, but a Laguna splitter oh, survived the test of time better than a Cooper splitter. Plus, there were so many fucking wank looking Cooper Spider boys that just butchered them on the to cars. Be fair, and they were what is the wee splatter you see in Phase 1 bumpers where there's no, it's not the Gluna splatter, but it's just like a wee bit of uh, plastic trim around the bottom of it? That was awful Laguna as well. Oh, really? Yeah, like an earlier that model. Nearly, that's what I had. I nearly prefer Sierra it on a Phase 1. I originally had that in the Sierra. It was I was like a non vented Laguna splatter. Yeah. I, I, I think it was just off an earlier model. Yeah. Maybe in a Spass. No, no a Spass. A Spass was a big chunky thing, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. Spass player was a big chunky boy. Probably that, then. That's what I bought in England that time. And that's and right. Your wee man in the clay was all, oh, you're going for fake lose. And I was like, shut up. <laughs> Out of curiosity then, uh, to sort of tail off D-Turbos um, again, where did the, what is a D-Turbo S then over a D-Turbo? It's not just the last batch of them produced. What's what? What 
was the D-Turbo S. D-Turbo S. No, it was just a trim package. Oh, it was a oh, trim, you're right. Yeah. Was it like half leather or what? The S was the last batch of 110s, Michael. Fuck's sake. 110S was the last batch of 110s. I'm getting mixed up. Was it just a trim? Yeah, it was, I. But, like, but I don't know what the difference was. Not a lot. That's fun I think fact. maybe electric windows in the front. That's whenever we start plugging the merch, that's what our S is off. Yeah. Yeah. Then the LSD, you see the S is off the D-Turbo S. That's Staying true to the roots. That's what that, that's what that is. Um, so I've got a few questions coming up here. Uh, first one, Donald Holmes. He just wrote, uh, Jimmy Keys is a weeble. <laughs> it's not a question. Jimmy Keys, previous podcast host, or host, previous podcast. Uh, yes. <laughs> nice guy, to be fair, but apparently, according to Donald, you're a weeble. So, Jimmy, I'll expect in the next round of questions, you'll be replying back with something else. Well, I go with the next one then. Yeah. Um, oh, that's right. You can click on it. It makes it bigger. Or you can just, yeah, move them like that. Um, go on and sell a bit of merch, lads. I've cash burned a hole in my pocket here. It says, that's nice. Dara. 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 Ah. I'm not even going to try no, it. No, I can't, I can't put justice to that. It's, uh, um, it's in the works. Wait. We're, fa- we're, we'll, t- we'll talk in D Turbo terms. We have done phase one. And we've seen what we don't like. Don't know and what we're saying, incurred. if it's concept. Huh? It's concept and if anything else. Ah, well. Um, we're but getting there. Basically, like, we're not going to sell some if we don't like it. And there's no point in us going ahead and getting... Like, we don't want your money ho- unless hoodies, we hoodies like done up. We Aye, getting hoodies done up and then us getting them and going, uh, we don't even like these, but fuck, we need to try and sell them. I'm not going to be able to sell some if my if I genuinely don't believe in it. Like so, like as sort of dickhead as that sounds, like it's true. Like I'm not going to push trying to sell some until I know it's good, and I know it's it's I know I like it. So at the minute, like me and Connor are in a debate on what way the merch should be done, and we're getting two separate versions made. There's a lot of bitching going on. <laughs> yeah, so we're like in a we're in a group with the people who's doing the stuff the work for us, and like Connor's like I think we should do this, and I'm like I disagree. Um, so now we've completely we found out we're very picky bastards. Yeah, we're both fussy, and neither of us are willing to compromise. So <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're I'm going to get my version what I think's good done, and Connor's going to go for his, and then after that, Connor's likely proved me wrong. But anyway, yeah. Go with the next one, Michael. Will Iron FFF 56, will we be heading to Rally of the Lakes this year? I fucking wish. I would say at this stage it's 95% no and a 5% possibly. Unlikely. I'd love to go. We had thought about it. We had sort of, yeah, thought about it, but logistically it, it's, it's just, not going to work out for me this year at all. Yeah, it's not going to work for me either. There's just so much going on. Uh, there's a lot even the week before I'm away and all that there like so I can't just be away all the time especially at weekends like so you going on the next one? Is that Philip Morrow? Yes. Ah, so Philip Morrow 96 has said alright lads working in cars tighter in what is some of the injuries you've had? What have you got injured on working on something Connor? Uh, this one? That's funny I was told we were lowering the 6 that alright oh yeah? Yes. <coughs> I was doing the front struts and the spring clamp slipped. <laughs> squashed three of my fingers together. <laughs> oh, fuck. With full tension. <clears throat> Got down to answer my knee. E. X rayed. Told I had three broken fingers. Bandaged up with three big banana fingers. Landed down like two, three weeks later for another X ray to make sure they were alright. And your woman told me no, it was never broke. I got lucky. I just really mangled my hand. There was a hair on the X ray. Right. That's oh, so they actually thought, oh. They thought it was a hairline crack, but it wasn't, it was a hair. I was like, right, fair enough. I was grand. I was all healed up at that stage. Fucking hell. At least you had spring clamps. What have I had working? I've had a lot of busted knuckles. A lot of shit in your eyes. La oh, fi. Oh. Yeah. <coughs> Aye, maybe ten times. It's got to the stage where I know you can pull it out myself. <laughs> means must. I just know exactly how to do it now. You're pull that game strong, lad. Oh, pull that game's deadly, lad. Um, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I think, anyway. Um, what else? I once was... I could have been a lot worse, but I was... You know why you should always cut away from yourself? Well, I was trying... I had, I had a blunt ice Stanley blade, and uh, I was cutting something, and... I put that much force onto it, like I came round and came across the front of my shirt and ripped my t-shirt, but never actually 
caught me. It was like the faintest wee red line across, and I was like, I was lucky. Because it was blunt. But then at the same time, had it been a sharper blade, I wouldn't have had to put the same force into it. Yeah. So, either way, just don't cut towards yourself, kids. Go on, you don't work in your own car, so you can't answer that. Yes, I pay people. <laughs> <laughs> what if they hurt? <laughs> well, no, to be fair, with lowering the polo and that, um, whenever I was... So, obviously, whenever you're rolling the arches, you would use an arch roller. Well... I'll, I'll elaborate um, I tried to roll well I did art, roll the arches in the polo with a bit of flat paint just bit it again the fucking arch but then I cut myself whenever I was trying to do it in the lip of the arch because I had fucked it that badly Ah, that's about the height of it to be honest with you. I just get I, yeah I'm a born bastard I had the Sierra fall on me once I had a 306 fall on me I ne- just nearly nearly fall on me other than somebody had threw the wheels in underneath it I had well I the remember. way you actually work in your car, sitting like Buddha. No, I've noticed that too, actually. <laughs> he sits just, with the two legs uh, crossed. Cross. Ah, and I'm like, I'm not even flexed on that. Like, 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 I'm like, yeah, what are you doing? I've always done that. Um, I remember one night, me and Calvin, Calvin was working in his Lexus, and then I remember I was in Sierra and whatever I was doing that, the next thing, one of the axle stands had been pulled out for me to get it, so the next thing, the car just was like leaning on me, and I was like, Calvin, <laughs> Calvin, help. And just like literally, the, 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 just like whatever it was, was just kind of like lying here, pressed on me. And I was like, like, I was just like, this is kind of heavy. <laughs> like, this isn't cool. So I had to get Calvin to get in the jack and get up. Like, I, I probably, no, it wouldn't have crushed me. Like, I wasn't getting crushed, but it was just quite uncomfortable. And I, I was jammed in, like, but it wasn't painful. It wasn't that stage. All right, big man. Well, it's just, I'm not going to exaggerate the story, like. No. No, not not like Michael takes I do it. <laughs> no. M one HV uh, underscore VV merch be ready for Donegal. I fucking hope so. That's actually a very good deadline. To be fair. Oh, I want it before. All oh, right, enough. I only have a couple of months. Ah, yeah, this is a good deadline. Then I imagine we said Donegal, r- Donegal rallies usually the weekend of my birthday too. Not this year. Is it not? It's the week after. Oh. Uh, we would very much oh. like to have it. Uh, well, it should be ready. All right, go on. Um, AS250 or AS200 says Francis O'Brien Limiter of an AS250 sounds far better But an AS200 would take far more abuse I would take a 250 Very hard question because You love 250s? No, not even that John O'Son, a well done 250 and 200 are on par with each other mm-hmm. Now the 250 does sound better when they see it sounds so much better I think they look better too I think they're a nicer they're, car They're like a big land tank they are, they are like a big VIP whip mm-hmm. Just nothing takes abuse like a 200 Nothing To Like the, t- the 250s Will start to get warm See to be fair um, A 200 To be fair There was one One night it was uh, The country night In Oma And I think I Put the Photo into a group chat Years and years ago And It was a yellow one On a set of white rotas Yeah like that Gosh. was just fucking like I was continuing to say to Adam like why will you not put a fucking ducktail in your car and then I like light- the spoiler that's put in this I don't I like it in this spoiler everything spoiler everything no I like the spoilers but it's, it's something I like anyway and I guess one thing I would say to Kreth put a spoiler in the chaser and that would just finish her I like the spoilers but mm. is it my turn or yours that's your turn Francis O'Brien again uh, thinking of doing a just box ask BBQ invite only kind of deal. Aye, good man. <laughs> invite us. Hopefully we'll be there. No, I think he's saying, would we think of doing that? Oh, I thought he was. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't ask a question, being like, oh lad, when are you free? I've got an invite only barbecue happening. Would it be yours? So it, it says, think of doing a you know, just box ask barbecue meet. Invite only kind of deal. So like, I'd like to do something like that. To be fair, it'd be good. But it's just getting the time. I'm, uh, I'm giving up for him, like to how. Oh, I, I, I do, I. But I've, I'm on the road four or five days a week at the moment. <laughs> Connor oh. Kelly, next one. <laughs> <laughs> what size are your feet? Um, eleven. eight, eleven. Your big socks, lad. <laughs> big socks. Wait, what, what size, size are you? Eight, eight. <laughs> no. Fuck. 
My, w- my, 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 my work boots are actually 12 because of the steel toes, so they're a bit narrower. So, so it turns out that Connor's came in his good clothes, I came in good clothes too. So we literally have the same boots, bar his is dark tan and mine are light tan. No, dark brown and I'm minor tan. So yeah. They are nice shoes, to be fair. Uh, Nathan Pitts, 145. Opinions on dirty diesels. Well, we've literally just spent the last hour talking about them, so pretty sure we're pretty good with them. Oh yeah, yeah. Do like a dirty diesel. D Heron six five five. Uh, dream tractor pull yoke or drift build. Also, what about LSD window decal and time for goal? Yes, we have thoughts and some steps, and we just need to get one cut to see what they look good, like. I think the Sunstruck will be a good seller. Um. Dream tractor pulling yoke or drift build? Well, mine would be a Zara with PD 130 Zara because it's different. And yeah. tractor pulling yoke, I would just like to buy an 8340 and just screw a wee bit, you know, and then that would do tractor pulling as well. Dream tractor pulling yoke would be a 18090 um, wide wheels with the, the diff for the gears changed out so she goes to 40k, but then with the big wheels she does 43 or 44k and a bigger or a modified injector pump on a bigger turbo. What would what you do you? if you were building a tractor pump? Anything. Anything. I would go for a major a V8. Oh, that'd be cool. Like, an old, like one of the old, old majors. Yeah. E27N, like kind of thing, 1945. Sort yeah. Of. That'd be class. That'd what would be so cool. Drift build. There's a couple. There's a couple. Like. What about drift build? I can't answer that one. Why? Don't, don't watch enough of it. Or ah, but you played car X was. Uh, how about this here? Dream rear wheel drive. Probably a twin cam. Uh, uh, a twin cam drift car is cool. Like it would be cool. Twin cam. I'll oh, OM six or six Sierra. Be mine. Look. What? Uh, Curtis from Gaul. Oval Kurt. Uh, what cars do you think boys will start to appreciate next? Being that Chasers and IS200 are the cars to have at the moment. GT86s, I think, will be what people start going for in the future. Not enough of them, but... But, and I personally don't like them enough. I just think they should have been turboed. It's a very difficult question to answer because we're now getting to the tail end. Well, if you think about it, like, it's going to take 10 years for an F30, you know, like your 3 Series from 2015, 2016, to get attainable for They're everybody. They're too heavy now. There's too much electrics on them. There's too much. But the thing is, well, that's the thing. I think with the likes of the BMs, are they not electric diffs? Because, like, like, if you think about it, what car is going to come along next that, you know, you know, you have a Type R for your, your limiter, you have the Sierra because you can differ and give her dog's abuse. And well, back in the day, she was a cheap man's coupe. You have a coupe, it is the one of the best known cars in the country. D turbos are iconic. I really don't know what else, but there's nothing else out there that's rear wheel drive that's affordable. Mazda MX5s, maybe, but even front wheel drive. Um, the only thing coming to my mind right now is E46 BM. Even there, older, like even maybe an E92 or something I like got there, but again, to put a diff in one M's like 13, 14 more pounds. But like an E92 M3, yes, but you wouldn't go and buy a 330D one, you know, with a coupe. Mm, don't know, Chrissy McKenna's is class looking. Oh, it is. Oh, it's unreal. Like, it's got the Maxton kit and all decked, it's, it's, it's class. I would give you the horn for one, all right. The problem is, there's not that many in the manual anymore. No, no. Andrew Muldrew can soon sort that out he's I'm pretty sure has his auto and he can he's the diff and all well that in his like his thing he's a 335D and that goes like fucking shit off shovel the only other thing I'm thinking of that there's enough of them about um, for cheap sort of fun one series is funny I seen one at the at Drift Games there that last day I mapped it was maybe like a one two three D or a one two five D. He was bouncing the popcorn and her all day long. And that thing was sliding. She had bags of torque. She was she was cool, but I just can't get away from the fact that one series just. I just don't like them. And you'd be cutting people's hair too as well. Yeah, you'd be worried about the scissors coming around. <laughs> um, well, GTA Six is my opinion. There's not enough of them about, and they're shocking dear. Aye, uh, for what they are. 
like AS two fifties, there's nothing about. It's like the same as two hundreds. Um, two hundred took over from them. Well, only because there's not as many two fifties about as there are two hundreds. Like <coughs> the two hundred was too cheap. At a time, uh, yeah, true. Probably would have the two fifties right. will never be that cheap. No, no. Two hundreds, like you could have bought two hundred there for like six hundred. Well, I mine was five hundred pound. I'd say the next proper cult car could be a Mark IV Golf. It's they're, already a, they're already a cult car. Yeah. They're a cult car. Hundred percent. They're already a cult car. That whole Mark, that whole chassis, Mark Bora, Mark Four Golf, Mark One Leon. No, but Toledo, what, the reason Mark not, Two Leon. The reason I'm not to a degree, to a degree, but it's not the same chassis. It's the same as the Mark Five Golf, but yeah. definitely that first one. They're all modern. They're modern classics. I know. Well, I'm not saying they're cult yet because nobody. There's not many people started to buy them to do them up mint. They're all culty okay, cars. Aye, aye. They're the. You know what? Uh, Mark IV Golf is your modern day D Turbo. Aye. For now, yeah. But, but it only is. instead of getting one thirty break, you're getting two thirty. Yeah. Yeah. You're still getting your smoke buried. Oh, Three wheels. A young lad's going to run down Mark IV Golf as quick as he's going to run to my car. Look at it. You yeah. know, for the 100%. noise and all that kind of thing. Oh, I, because you especially know the fucking hard cut limiters you get for him. Um, what else really is there? Because hey, Toyota, Toyota started to make boring cars mostly, so like no, in, there's no new Evos. You know, Subarus look wank, and I don't even know if you get them over here. They won't release the Nissan 400Z over here. No, because they can't meet Euro 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 regulations. Are fucking killing it for them. the only things you can buy now. It'll be it'll be electric stuff, which has the power. And if you can, fuck, but I'm sure at some point boys will start fucking. About them, if well, them to make them lock diffs and stuff like that. Or, well, I don't know if they're diffs, if they're electronically controlled motors, but there'll be ways of... Well, the only thing that could, theoretically, in time to come, sort of take off, because there's enough of them about, is, FTA, is the F30s. Because everybody and their dog's daddy has an F33 series with an M-Performance kit. Yeah. But they're literally the same as a, an E90, though. Yeah, but they're a big heavy car. Still, and it's a hard C20 to get, or a C30. You don't, get, you don't get the same aftermarket parts for them. Now, that's not to say you won't in a few years' time. Yeah. Give like, the developers time. Uh, it's the same with your Series 6. You didn't have the parts back then, you have now. No, you did Death Sierras, definitely. There's a lot same. more for Sierras now than there was back then. Look. Uh, is it you or me? Um, you. Official Low Spec is asking, are we heading to the port on Easter Sunday? Yeah. I'll be about four about. In. In the Bora. Well, uh, Sarah's not going to be ready. Uh, Sarah just about making it up shit. This is obviously being released on Sunday. Um, very up in the air for me. No, Don't know, I'll be maybe there. in the morning for an hour, but like logistically, it's going to take about five hours to get home with traffic. So, is there any real point in me going? Not sure. I'll go up, maybe go for a walk or Have something. Have you seen K20 MGO about and say hello, but I don't know if I'll be there or not. Tell you best of luck. Okay, cheers. <laughs> like we used to do back in the day. I remember them water fights. <laughs> Good times. Tasty gob shape. Uh, I'm not a fan of Civics, but fuck me, I'm sat in the van listening to her and repeat. That's because I put up the video of you banging in the yard. Oh, I did. I put it on repeat too. <laughs> <laughs> and you made me do it on repeat in the cloudy loop. Yes. 100%. 100%. It's fun. Big flames. Big flames. Um, look, it's black. Need to get an old head guest on the pod that is mad stories from back in the day. I have a couple of them lined up. Uh, I was saying earlier about Gary Kerrigan, because he was he's a bit older than us. He's he's good crack. And then Al Dillon as well. He goes back a generation further. He was about in the days of the Max Power stuff. An idea would actually to see if you could get somebody that's now about 40. That's Al Dillon. That, oh, really? Yeah, Al Dillon's 42 or 43. From around here. Well. That D turbos never the refresh. Knew where felt spec comes from. Yes. Mm. It's not a bad idea, actually. That could be the next felt spec one. The history of felt spec. What else we got? Um, McCraith, 2JZ. Yeah, Johnny McCraith, yeah. Um, has asked, what unappreciate cars of the car scene are out there? That's a good question. You make Corollas? The crows are starting to get very, very appreciated now. Aye, what they were for a long time. For a long time, aye. Even the older crosses, and see the ninety Corollas, nineteen mm-hmm. nineties crows now, like E tens and stuff like Do that. Do I know some D turbos? Nobody yeah. give a fuck about them. 
You didn't? Uh, and now you see one, you're like, that's fucking deadly. What has what have we started seeing in the last couple of years? Of hatches. People? Aye, hatches is one. Sierra hatches. Sierra mm-hmm. hatches is definitely one. Booters. Yeah. Booters. I still take a coop any day over a booter. I would take a coop, but I appreciate a good booter. Yeah, yeah, but it used to be I would look at a booter and went, that's a booter. And now I see a booter and go, oh, that's kind of cool. Uh, Corsa Bees and Novas. <sighs> well, they're, they're, no, they're not unappreciated. They're appreciated now. They're appreciated in a different way. What are we seeing now that we look at and go, that's a S14s, like S13s, and S15s. You looked at them and you were like, nah, that's nice, but now you're like, that's fucking class. Yeah. What what, what would you have looked at that was? <coughs> on a, I think, to be honest, unappreciated cars of the scene. I think Mark III Golfs were shite. Like, we, for a long time, I was like, Mark III Golfs. Uh, and I know I'm maybe offending Connor of the Relo podcast when I this, but I hated them for a long time. See, so, you now I, I see a Mark III, I'm like, actually, I quite like that. And for a long time I didn't. They're hard to do right. But when they're done right, they are class. And I've seen a few done right. Like, there's a lot of tastefully ones done right there. But it's just because there were so many shite ones floating about for such a long time. Like, Volcanes are another thing that really nobody cared much about. The ZXs? They definitely were the... They definitely were the ugly brother Like for a long yeah. time. Like, yeah, 100%. Mm. Even modern day... Which is, I don't know, really, to be honest, because I'm so stuck in the past. Yeah. I don't really know anything about new cars. Maybe, like, maybe boys will say the Mark 7 is that everybody drives about with the pops and bangs and all at the minute. Like, maybe boys will say, like, that was the most fun they had in a car. To be fair, M140As. Yeah, they're pretty cool. But they're open diff, but they sound really well, and they go M140As? Like Couldn't be an open diff. Aye. There's 300 on brake. Aye. Open diff. I'm near sure, eh? Okay. So one M's are the oh M one forty. That's why your man. That's why Clarkson put her in the ditch, in the track. No, not the ditch, but the grass. I suppose that would that would make sort of sense. Um, what else really is there? You could say every Jap car, but it's like anything that comes in roundabouts. The other turn. Aye, underappreciated. <coughs> Nothing glorious, I think. They're cool, but they don't get the same following as like the likes of Laurels or any of that stuff. Like Cavaliers, oh, for a long time, nobody yeah, really okay. give a fuck. I love Cavaliers. I love Cavaliers. Do you want to buy one? I'll buy two. That's all right. <laughs> you can take mine. I know, and... but I only fell two hundred pounds short. <laughs> Still the highest offer you got. <laughs> oh, I need to get that thing sorted. Uh, and Colin Smith seven. Uh, can a W210 that's a Merc be VAP felt I don't know really if VAP felt is that like an off brand like because VAP spec is pretty cool and you're talking like felt plus oh, 100% absolutely I can't even think of what a W210 is uh, big long body Merc big E class sure. oh yeah they're see if it was dacked in a set of 19s tucked full tents with like the likes of the curtains and stuff. That'd There's actually VAP. in one thing. Felt. Old Mercs decked in Alfords. Very unappreciated because nobody does it. Old Mercs. Aye. Okay. Yeah. 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 Nobody does it. Yeah. Old Mer- old Mercs in general are class. Yeah, the one like ease and stuff like that. Yeah. They're ca- they Fabias are another thing. Yes. VRS. Big Go to time. Fabias. Nobody actually does. I love. And then they started doing them now. They mm. were they were the the predecessor to the Rovers. Yes. They took over for a while and then just fuzzled out. Everybody loves rovers. Um, yeah, rovers are deadly. I love rovers. Rovers well, were like the Series n- 6's big brother in the end of Nobody Couldn't keep so- quit. Just soft. I yeah, that's the, the problem with rover. I would have said the better looking brother, but nobody ever done, or very, very few people done a 130 polo. There wasn't that many of them about. Because in the pre face left, you got the, it was a GT, and then in the. Dollar, yeah, it was just like he could have bought a 1.9, 130. But whatever way they had done the engine, they didn't pull. Different turbo. Different turbo. Different turbo. Uh, Staley Rayleigh, root, going. House dub shed, go, prep going. Terrible. Terrible. Can you're spending know. your whole time worrying about. Uh, fucking about way springs, trying to get 10 mil. Uh, JC Photos 2. Uh, what's your opinion on the E36? Love them. Yeah, they're class. The E36s are class too because there's so much aftermarket stuff out there for them now that you can do them like you can do them Jap spec 
like a musk customs kit is like class looking and they they look so you can make them look Japanese spec like drift spec they are cool or even MC Evo spoiler looks well and yeah too. even just an e, like just even M3 kit it set of motorsports like kind of the air style like just decked M3s. never I used to never appreciate them but now I really do uh Callum 7740's response uh from the earlier 2000s era what was the coolest car you had seen early 2000s uh well, that's Starlet the white one what one was that white one with red wheels maybe no that or it had red wheels and maybe a checkered roof or something yes snakes and ladders in the roof do you remember that mm-hmm. he had a bad boy bonnet and all yes it was in his Alex. yes that or there used to be this Vauxhall Astra it was like really 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 wide it used to be in the Max Power posters yeah it was like silver and blue yeah oh yes the was it Carista's one or something something they like that it was like uh, she went on fire but yeah. they're, they're, they're actually re, there's yes, a company they're re- redoing it they're redoing it I remember that that was class Um, I'm assuming he's asking us Max Power spec and not uh, see for local um thinking whoever the yellow mark four with the wings west kit that used to run a bit more felt yeah. back it was fucking cool back what, in the who's day. that was it mclaughlin or something and I, I used to see outside uh jf mclaughlin's house in the way to me aunts and that there what car was that mark four golf in yellow with the wings west kit on it uh, i think it was wings west kit yeah she was a uh, custom color couldn't tell you. Yeah, she had a bad boy bonnet. She, and all. Had the, yeah, she had the yellow seats and all on her as well. I think she was a custom, custom. Color. It was a girl drove it too, wasn't it? That's who bought it after. I would say. Uh, maybe I, I couldn't maybe. tell you. It was in a set Tourers or something, wasn't it? Two piece cans no, or something. No idea. Two piece cans. I just I think made it was. It big five books. Yeah, because it was class. the only one that was really like out there around Marvel that I can mind. Uh, B dot OC nine nine. No questions, but please give my mention to Ben and Wicklow. Love the pod boys. Good luck, Ben. Thank you very much for Thanks listening. Thank you very much. Cheers. Appreciate it. Uh, Colin EK9. What cars do you have on PS? I think I found an old YouTube channel of yours. If you found that old YouTube <laughs> channel, please keep that to yourself. Why? Oh, was oh, it that one where you vlogged? Building your car? Oh, no, that one's okay. I thought I thought I meant from one from like years ago. The one you're playing the guitar and stuff? I think it was me doing jump stand. <laughs> <laughs> what did you mind that? What? Did you mind that? I you and your did that at, at a wedding haircut? recently. You did jump stand at a wedding recently? Yes, I did. Do you I, know I, I, peri- I periodically still go and look up some videos of jump stand. And uh, Party Rock Anthem came on and I shuffled and I nobody looked shuff- up me and I, I was sh- like, I am not doing this I anymore. I can shuffle as well, but periodically I'll still go and look up videos. You sh- did you jump stand? No. You strike me as someone that would have. Yeah, I didn't do anything I should have. I loved it. I loved it. Like I, I never did it at the the elk back in the day, elk, but the like. no, wee elk. You used to, you used to get servos around yeah, about the walls, jump stand. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. In the middle, and then somebody would push somebody in, and it was just a brawl kicked off. <laughs> <then>. Correct. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. What cars do you have? Uh, two Sierras, a P100, a Cavalier, an XSIS 300, and a Bora Daily. I have a Civic and a Golf. What do you have? Uh, L two hundred. Do you've not have line up? You've uh, you've not line up yeah. anymore. Would you ever think of buying some cool again for the oh, crack? Every day. Why not? Do it. Because too miserable. Think That's of it, it as an investment. Yeah, it's only measure like we'll put it this way. When I paid cash for my car, I was depressed for all of two seconds before I hit the button, and I was like, "Fuck it, be grand." Think of it as an investment, <laughs> business fund. Because like three oh sixes are only going to get there because there are only good ones left. I know that, but there's no good ones left. Yeah. They've ran their course, unless somebody's took it and stopped it, and you would need to be there to see it. Yeah. Ian Bloomfield's good for it. Yes. That's actually not a bad call, actually. He had, during that red stand, he had, it was absolutely fucking class. Yeah. And he, he got big money for it. He has a wee C. He does have a wee C. Yeah. That's right, he does have a wee Which C. Which was one of the only two series sixes that never beat me. That was, but probably Aaron Cassidy. Yeah. Or he had it. Uh, and then the other one was Cassidy's other series six. What one was that? Built the sleeper. What one was that? The five was that the five door? door? Blue. Like teal blue. I do remember this. No haters, no nothing. She was just enough to go. There and was, he was happy. There was another one that used to be about TAW as well. It was a grey five door. 
Uh, phase one. Yes. With diesel bumper. Yes. Yeah. She was fast too. Thomas Higgins. I can hear geese. Might have been. I think it was Thomas. Uh, yeah. That was quick too. Dan Dot Steezy, when are you going to come up for our Drift Games Invitational? I was at the last one. So I guess I've already right on that one. Yeah. Uh, Shane McGahan's response. Would you ever get into drifting in Nuts Corner or Bishop's Court? Absolutely. If there was the money there? 100%. Not a bother. The only thing is um, the car's not mapped. I would I would do Nuts Corner. Because like, I know a few other boys who take the series in Nuts Corner. Although Curtis Ferguson told me to stay away from it. like, But I, w- I would consider Nuts Corner. I would just have to sit and the, like, hold the inside. On your own or with the crowd? I would try and go with my boys I knew. If possible. The, uh, Bishop's Court... Again, Bishop course five hundred pound a day out. Like, as a day, it's a day day right? Like, you know, the at least with Eglinton you used to go and drift in Eglinton, you come back with more rubber on your tires. Mm-hmm. Like, Eglinton was so easy on tires. There's a wet track, and it was like, well, it's sort of like air, runway sleepers. So it was so easy wearing. So, like, I mean, I done four or five drift days on the same set of tires, and like the car was out the whole time. Like, done more damage to clutches than I did to the uh, tires. Like. And then Mickey Lavelle wrote to me, uh, rate the micro 1 out of 10 for the podcast. Nowhere near finished, but getting there slowly. It is actually kind of cool, to be fair. I do love that shape of micro, mm-hmm. K10. So it's a, sort of a burgundy colour with the wide wheels. I'm going to look on the photo. Four spokes, not Revos. Ah, can't remember what you call them. Basically, look like you would have seen them in old manis and stuff. They're, they're cool, like. So, uh, um, yeah. Do you know what? There's one there. And Tim seen it with like a wee HKS style bike box on it that's like cut and or like it's basically put at an angle. Oh, that'd be cool. That looks cool. That just does look cool as fuck. To be fair, though, they're another car that extremely unappreciated. No, everybody has a secret love for them. Yeah, yeah. everybody loves it, them. About six years ago. Mm, okay, yeah, fair enough. And a few more off the Facebook. Uh, Raymond McNichol. Oh, I work with him. Discuss why the Irish farm scene and Toyota seem to be partners for life. Not just, I put up a picture of a Crina with a bale on top of it, and he says, not just your picture. Uh, I don't know, Toyotas would be just known They for, only rot, they don't die. Aye, uh, they're, they're rugged, like. Top Gear done them a big favour. Yeah, definitely. A massive favour. But even that, like, jeez, every farmer around here had a Crina, like. Every Land Cruiser, again, I don't think has really sold in miles. Because no. they go no. forever. Now I'll tell those Land Cruiser had like 340,000 miles on it. It's just the bag end it. that rusts it or that rots on them. He had his done. Like his was like, as I say, 340,000 miles. And it's a sh- also the short wheelbase is like the precursor to your now Defender. Yeah. But, but it's like, yes, you could buy a pickup, but if you want it to be dogs anglies, you bought a short wheelbase but Land like Cruiser. But on them, Invincible. And yeah. plus... Corollas, no, that kind of. Like, oh, but as I say, like even around here, like ever, like there have been some farmer would have had an Avensis with like four hundred and fifty thousand miles in the clock. A her- ball cart on her, and, <laughs> <laughs> and literally him pop probably because he's driving to the market every day, and him towing like a three three axle or a tri axle Hudson fourteen foot, Wait. loaded with like seven balls on her. <laughs> a few spare bales just in case. <laughs> Sitting on the roof. <laughs> Honest to God, like they just they don't, don't die. die. They don't die. So I would say that uh, Andrew Muldrew wrote to me. Any more word in this car meet in the silo? Again, as we said earlier, yes, I'd love to, but uh, just get the fucking time at this point. There's only so many weekends in a year, and every weekend seems to have something on. But and the one weekend I have nothing on, sometimes just nice to actually not do anything. Yeah, because that that's, that can be nice too. And then Hugh Bar, uh, Gold Plow Farm Models. I think that's just a hint. Gold Play Farms, what do you call his farm? Then he's a Gold Play Engineer, which is also him, and the models. Yeah. So, we'll all be taking... You, you're coming to us, or you're coming to Hugh Bars. I need to go to him, yeah. Uh, I mean to do this every time before we jump on to our main topic, but need to give a sponsor, shout out to James for the table. Yes, Design so, Crafts. Design Crafts for the engine table. Uh, he's actually put a big push on there at the minute. Um, seeing he's got a couple of straight sixes and V8s up there, so... If you need an engine table done, or you've decided you've rattled the engine in your car, and it's are you blowing a rod out the block, and you've now got an engine with a big gaping hole in it, bring it to James. He'll even use your uh, spare pistons and uh, rods as table legs, and then a nice glass top on it, and we're good to go. 
So thank you, James, for being the sponsor. And it's now raining as usual. Yes, correct. Do you have any big old schedule when we pitch? Um, I s- I've won. Do you have any? Just that four or five earlier. Deadly. Fuck, I love four or fives. What else? Oh, I have loads. Well, I have loads. Oh, I filled my pickup with diesel last night. Um, that's no, that wasn't last night. Oh, it was last night. That's well done, Connor. Yeah, that was, <laughs> that was a one wheel pill. Because um, <laughs> I burnt two bars out of it today. <laughs> oh. Uh, big skid, took the car out. Big skid, make loads of noise. One wheel pill, sore and feel. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I have a, I have a few ones here. Um, Andrew Muldrew sent me a video there recently. Did you, have you seen the video of the cattle like jumping off the boat and yeah. the sea? So apparently that's outside County Mayo at like Belt Mullet, Bell Mullet or something like that. It looked like it was like the middle of the Philippines because a nice blue sky and a nice. Yeah, I thought like, that too. I thought it was a word. Apparently it's County Mayo. So yeah. I thought this was cool. Like, I didn't know cows could swim either. Uh, humans are, are like the only animals or mammals anyway that can't instinctively swim when you throw them in water. They can't even walk. Even cats will instinctively swim. Speaking of walking, I remember once we had a calf born here, literally popped out, one time. got up and just fucking bolted and we were like... Alright, you're saying bolt. How did that happen? <laughs> like, the big gate there, like literally, it would just because it was wee and couldn't jump, we got it cornered at that gate and the gate is a holes on it so it could have to by right snuck through it yeah but obviously I can't it was like oh I can't I can't get past this I remember I was like six at the time I just remember that literally this calf coming out and just fucking um, so it must have been well cooked of a uh, bigger skid there um Hannah Gay Gayler I think I that's must be the way you pronounce it anyway um on TikTok has took two well it's a video essentially um a wee calf transporter but it's, you know, the, like, big water blocks you get, you know, the... Oh, ABCs. ABCs. I've seen that too. Uh, <laughs> like, the two of them together, and it makes a wee... Oh, that's actually show. a really good idea. They really should put it in the quad, but if you don't have a quad, you can pull it. That's some job, actually. That's a really good idea, actually. Um, another bigger skid I have is, I never realised how funny-looking <laughs> fainting fiend, goats are. Oh, fainting goats are fucking hilarious. <laughs> 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 like, I mean, like, just it run down there and just fall over. There's another, there's another one of We're that. We're obviously not promoting animal cruelty, but they can't help it if they faint. There's literally, there's this video of another one of like this wee goat, and it's absolutely mad. And you see it like running about and it jumps on like other animals back and it jumps on top of a fainting goat and the fainting goat just fucking falls <laughs> as it jumps in the back of it. Like, um, Another actually thing just, I uh, suppose you say it's bigger than scared. I um, think fainting goats were bred because basically if there was like predator animals come in, the good animals got away and the fainting goats fainted. <laughs> Do you not think recently-ish, no, obviously no American country music is quite popular. But like with Beyonce releasing sort of an American, oh, country, uh, yes. it's quite like my TikTok is lighting up with people doing line dancing and stuff to different new country songs. Don't know, like there was a big resurgence in the country stuff, like maybe about you no know, seven or eight years ago, with then Nathan Carter and all that stuff. Come on, remember at the time? But yeah. Now definitely. But like Beyonce with mainstream. Texas Hold'em and it's that. On, it's on Colour FM, Radio. And like yeah, you've now country to country in Belfast. Yeah. yeah it's mainstream now. Like. Uh, it's over with Stephen Heyman there. He's a f- listener of the pod. Yes. Um, he's a Saab engined BMW E36 drift car. Just giving him a mention because it was nice to be over with. Does he love torture? Ah, he's had his fair share, all right. Eh? Uh, hey, you just need to keep a wee seatbelt away from that. It's then, just so. interesting because he had a similar, uh, he's a similar size turbo to what I had. And he was saying, you know, left it very, like, you have to be on the limiter all the time to sort of get her to go. And I was like, I know, I think I had that exact same problem, but yeah. uh, smaller turbo for me was definitely the way to go. Heard the best saying ever at the Drift Games Invitational. Fella goes to me, fella Kieran Stack goes to me, he's like, uh, he's like, I seek that car. He goes, lived his entire life on the Scudder. Never heard of that in my life. I was like, well, come again. He goes, the Scudder. Living on, and he's from like down the country. Like, so he was like, she was on the Scudder. And I was like, I take the last kilometer. He's like, ah, did you not say it? And I was like, no, he goes, must be just from down here. Love Never heard that before. Did that was give, DGY to you then? Give her the scutter. So that, I'm going to start saying that from now on. Like it's now, I'm trying to imprint it in my brain here at the minute. Because I just think it sounds fucking hilarious. Maybe it'll catch on. I'm going to say it now anyway. Maybe. Why do all tankers, you know like tankers, like milk tankers and all that, why do they look like they've got a penis 
on the back of them with their reflective <laughs> light, right? Like the reflective stickers. It does, but doesn't it? I have never thought that before, and I see one every other day. There, if you're driving along at night time behind a tanker, say it's a camp, say it's a camcorder, <laughs> or, or a mountain tanker. I know what you mean. I. You want it to be pipe? No, I'm all the fact the refractive, the reflective like. like Tape goes around the, the edge of it goes so up it goes like up. this and then comes out and then like <laughs> <laughs> it just looks like a dick you never noticed I never actually thought about that it's not, not in the forefront of my mind well, yeah you dirty boy <laughs> it's just I see it it's like why does it just look like a big penis like well it's more of a tube it's <laughs> <laughs> as wide as it is tall it like. looks more like a mushroom but anyway <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it is. Uh, cactus. He wants to look at mushrooms, but like, why do you look like and a dick? Then, uh, come on, I was coming down there with the Dublin there the other day, and I was in, on the motorway, uh, just outside near and Dock, kind of direction. The next thing I was like, sort of, you know, you're just driving along motorway, you can kind of sort of be, I'm not saying losing concentration, but you know what, you're kind of in your. I wouldn't like you to lose concentration. Auto control, or autopilot. So, uh, yeah. sort of. The next thing I was like, like, was like, holy fuck, how to hit the brakes. This fella was sitting in an E-class Merc at 30 men learning the motorway. Yeah, you get a lot of that. I've never seen it as bad as that. And then I was like, I hit the brakes and I was like, fuck. And then the next thing, let a couple of cars by me. And the next thing then, uh, I got out past him. I looked behind and then this fella, and Naughty was coming along. He was turning off. And this fella who was driving in this Merc didn't indicate. And just, as nice as you like, like just in front of the Audi, as the Audi was coming flying, the Audi, you just seen the lights flashing. I was like, right, so it's not just me who thinks this boy's clearly going. Like 30 mile an hour. See if you're caught doing 30. That's worse than doing 130 mile an hour. Yeah, that is worse. Because, like. You'll see, I, I notice it a lot now with this new van of mine for it's not mapped. So well, I, I have to use the first lane. Whereas mm-hmm. beforehand, I, had, I was able to just pass it around. Now, and you go to overtake someone, you have to think about overtaking before you just do it. So Vecca said to me the other night, she was like, oh, sure, take my car. And I was like, <laughs> no. The car is a glorified bean tin. Like, it's fast to 40 miles an hour. It's so funny. Me and Becca would leave here at the same time. And like, she, she just like puts the foot down coming from like, the Claddy Crossroads. <laughs> and within about 100 metres, I'm just going past her waving. Because <laughs> I said to her, I was like, why did you slow down? She goes, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, no, that was me driving. Like, and I was like, oh. <laughs> but that is like it's 1.2 and like 64 horsepower or something you should put so. it up again the P100 oh no that back is cab would walk the P100 <laughs> <laughs> that's just how slow the P100 is it is so slow it's going to be even slower now when I change the diff to like the long range because uh, it's going to be instead of a 4.6 it's going to be a 3.6 so it means that it'll now actually do 70 mile an hour oh just take away to get power. Mm. To do 70 mile an hour? Mm. Downhill? Mm. Maybe. On a windy day? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. And Aaron Connery sent me a video of McMullen Farms, or Ryan McMullen's in the group. Has a 6290 on triples. And does it all day long? Does it all day long. Andrew Morton was showing a video of it. Her steaming along. Singing just? Singing. I know, I'd say, I'm pretty sure Ryan, if he's in the tractor bone group chat, this is not standard, she's, but she's probably doctored. Like that's still cool to see. Hundred percent. Like it just proves that when we do things in farm simulator, some of them are realistic. But he's like they're working hilly ground. Like they're Carnock. It's not yeah. exactly like they're like the flat plains of Lamavadi. Like it's it's proper. Should be getting worked. Hmm? It will be getting worked. I'd say she's getting every bit of it. And then they Does have, she have conditioners. Yes. Uh-huh. Oh, that's worse. Exactly. Class Mind the fate, uh, like the, the I video I showed you, the one ten with the troubles. Yes, but no conditioners. She's, she's no conditioners. just a glorified topper. Ah, she there's nothing there. Like there's no drag. That's okay. Whenever you're in a really dry country, oh, or yeah. you're guaranteed dry weather. Here you need the conditioner. Like yeah. Uh, what else? Joseph Cafola sent me a video of. Uh, didn't you see this? The tractor racing. The yeah. mud one. The mud race. Where they're like literally wrapping into puddles. And then you see the boy in the Zetter come on and he hits the puddle that hard it flows him off the tractor. Okay, Aye, let's see that. Look, it's fucking pure lucky that he He's not dead? Yes. <laughs> Correct. So he sent me that and if I, he was the first one to send it and then I've seen it a few more times after that but it was the same as like the case Did you see that? The combine cab. Oh, the, the, the farm, farm cylinder. cylinder. If I had sent that once I'd have sent that about 15 times like all my TikToks fall over at the minute. It's boys doing live streams of Euro Truck Simulator and they get into a cab. Oh, aye. Yeah. That's Same thing mad, again. Like. Same thing again. And then uh, Jack 
McGarry sent me a video and it was like it was like a American pickup truck and it's like someone putting like a pallet in the back and it's like 400 kilo or 800 pounds or whatever and you should see like the back of this big like Ford F350 or whatever it is Dodge Ram like sag down a bit and there's a couple of videos that's like lightweight and then the next thing it just cuts to like a video of an Indian pickup truck and there's an elephant in the back of it <laughs> <laughs> just a cell phone. I think Indians are, are a hell of a lot further forward than we think. Hi, uh, we like they use the, what we would class as a scrap tractor, and they're towing like forty ton weight. Uh, Did you see the video of how they overload the trailers and like, they and have, then they stack or how they bolt it and tie it, and, and then rope they it. have the cloth around the side yeah. of it and all, and it brings it up to like from like forty four ton. Yeah, on the tiller alone, and the tiller was decommissioned in eighteen hundreds. I, honestly, it is. No, it's insane. Or, or them on the two wheel drive and they just drive and the fucking front of us is pop. They're driving on the side brakes. You didn't see the one where um, there's a wee two wheel drive massive with a big dump tiller. And I mean a big dump tiller. And your man's constantly falling on the back hoe. Constantly falling the tiller and your man and the tractor's trying to get away. <laughs> That's great. <really tough. laughs> <Then, laughs> Donkey 262 does some real rash videos with like the, <laughs> the Indian and the Chinese boys with like the health safety videos that's on the track funny. Place. that's so funny that's <laughs> that's rash like but it's fucking hilarious um Owen Smith sent me a video of the Glen Sheen Anchor so the tractor pulling sled they have oh yeah just, I think that's just for more for promotional purposes he wants to put a sticker of us in the wagon but so we'd probably need to, we'd probably need to get a sticker yes we yeah, do yeah we would and then final big uh, old skid is you Sitting in the Bora, and the next thing I hear is, What's that noise? Open the door, bum, 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 bang! It was about a mile up the road, and I was like, Ah, Connor's in his way here. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, like, I've been very, very happy. So that's, that's me, the phone's finally away. And if we're looking at this, it's two hours 45 long. I actually got here fucking serious sharp ah, in the hope sure that this would be. Early. Well, it's not fair, as late as the last one. The last one, we... We were still recording at one o'clock in the morning. Half one. I, I, I got home at five to, one, five to two in the morning. No. Nah. And then I got home, and then whenever I got back to the house there, I was still having to then do all the editing. Or not the editing, but like taking the MP3 file yeah. and putting it online so I could then edit on the way down the road. I was a crabbit boy the following morning. So was. That's every morning, but anyway. How would you know? I don't know, I just get that vibe. All right. No comment. No comment. <laughs> um, I actually watch you wake up every morning. So on that note, will we Connor up? Hi. Um, Connor, what are your socials? Nope. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody ever knows. My name's Connor, sure it's Connor It's Connor Kelly one on Insta. Is it? Hi. That's it. I don't know what you are on Snapchat. Because um, you're on my phone. Connor is it Connor CX105 or something? It Snapchat? is Connor Some underscore CX105. Uh, and I don't know what you are or anything else. TikTok. I don't use TikTok. I just watch. I don't upload. Anyway, follow the pod <laughs> <laughs> at Limited Slip Differences on absolutely everything. TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, uh, Facebook. And uh, you can follow Connor on... Connor.magoo and all socials. And I yes. am uh, <laughs> Michael Scullin underscore on all socials. So from the three of us... Thanks very much for listening, guys. Cheers. Give her the scutter. Best of luck. Hi. Make out a thing like.